Poo Show. <laughs> Welcome back to the first <laughs> the Pee Pee Poo Show and the first week of that I've had in what feels like ages. I think my last week of was in May or June or something. Whoa. It's been kind of a long time. Um, but yeah. I'm back and I decided a good first day to film is uh, today because we are obviously at North Shore Tropicals. <laughs> With like hundreds of plants. Hundreds behind. of plants. It's import day. We are both filming separate import videos for our channels. But I thought that maybe I'd show you some behind the scenes stuff of what goes down today. Whatever doesn't make it into the import video will probably be here. Um, I said it in the import video, but I don't have a ton of time to be filming for this video today just because we're on the clock. It has to get done. Yeah. And Lauren is not paying me to film for my channel. And we, we have to get this done. Yeah. Like, otherwise, they're just sitting in the box for another day or like yeah. not getting treated. So lots of pressure on us because Lauren is on vacation. She trusts us to handle <laughs> her very expensive import. Yeah. Um, by the way, the plants are from Tropicals Plants. I will link them in the description. I think that they're my favorite place to import from just because the, they- The way they pack. The way they pack, the plants always come in really great condition. I just find acclimatizing to be so much easier when it comes from um, Tropicals Plants. So if, mm. you're looking for, if you're looking for a good place to import, I would start with them. Um, no shade to Equigenera, but. Tropicals plants kind they of... They just come a little more beat yeah, up. Yeah, it's like, just, yeah, yeah, it's a lot easier when you're importing from, from Gilberto. So, yeah, I thought the chair was going to fall apart. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, I'm with Alice. You already said that. I did? Yeah. I said that in the first video. Maybe? Well, we yeah. Pee -pee 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 show. Oh, yeah. Was that the first video? <laughs> it's already happening. Oh, God. The rain fog. <laughs> Um, so yeah, don't forget to follow Alice. I'll link her in the description as well. She's going to be posting an import video too. Uh, so give that a watch, but we're just going to get started. I will try and pop into this video as much as possible, but no guarantees. And scene. The uh, Q&A was a last minute decision. Oh, by the way, we're doing a Q&A, so I'm not wearing <laughs> makeup. <laughs> I wasn't planning to talk in front of the camera today, but alas, here we are. Basically, Alice and I have a ton of repotting to do. Uh, we're potting up the imports now. Um, and like so, a metric ton. Yes. <laughs> so, we're just gonna be answering some questions that I got through Instagram, and they're 
probably plant and personal, so we'll try and do a good mix of them. Let's start nice and easy. Favorite plant from each other's collection. Did we answer this already in a different one? Or was it like the plant I hate the most? I think yeah, I think, yeah. Fun. Favorite plant. Um, hold on, I gotta think about this. I wanna say it's your patty for me. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Or maybe even your um, your Florida, Florida ghost. Florida ghost? Yeah. Really? Because it's so big and it like is surviving on nothing. Like That's it's true. holding itself up. I know the bottom of the stem is like this big, <gasps> and the top is like this oh big. God. Wait, are we doing drainage holes for the? Uh, herbs? No. No. Um, Alice doesn't like any of my plants. No, I'm trying to think. Just, Just like I know there's some. Um, I think it's probably your gigantic monstera. Oh, that's a good one. Love that plant. The new leaves don't look special, but she's still cute. Mine's mine's slowly starting to get big. <laughs> I had like a two two years stall on that plant. Yours has been growing new leaves like pretty regularly. Really fast. It's really fast now. Yeah. I have a theory it was storing energy for two years. It's just powering up. Oh my ass is all wet now. Damn you, Sherman. Um, okay, so there's that question. Plants either of you own that the other could never. Could never own or never like? Like, like plants in each other's collection that were like, yeah, I would never own that uh, because blah, blah, blah. I don't think you have this plant anymore, but the zebra plant. Oh gosh, yeah, the Aphalandra sclerosa. Yeah. I would never own that again either. <laughs> Screw that. That thing is so thirsty and it's like very little like joy that I got from it. I thought it was going to be a plant that I just like shove on the shelf as like a, you know, filler plant. Yeah. And then it turned into like one of my most high maintenance plants. I was like, I did not sign up for this. Oh, that is huge. Oh, root systems are big. I am like filthy. Are you filthy? Oh yeah. I have like I'm wet. I'm wearing like... the same pants as yesterday because I <laughs> knew I was gonna get filthy again. Freaking heck. Um, I honestly can't think of anything in your collection that I'm like. I could never. Like yeah, I never like I'm scared of or like I don't, don't like, like it or something. What is a plant in her collection that I could never? I don't think I have one. It's kind of a boring answer, but yeah, I can't think of any off the top of my head. And I don't really have the time to scroll through her Instagram right now because we are on a bit of a time crunch with uh, getting all of these potted. We literally have over a hundred plants to pot today. And I'm hoping we can get it done, but I'm a little doubtful. Um, I didn't have an answer for that. Uh, there's nothing in your collection that I'm just like, no, can't, Ew. can't, and can't and won't. Maybe if you had like, like a calathea in your collection or something. Oh yeah. But it's pretty mild. And our collection is so similar anyway. But yeah. I know, and I kind of think of one that maybe like you don't even know about that. I would be like, never. oh, you, you would not, never want this plant. Yeah, exactly. We have like the same taste in plants. If a plant is like difficult for one of us, um, actually, no, that's not true. No. I feel like we definitely struggle with different kinds of plants. Do you have any plant that's like cloud forest, low temp, high humidity sort of situation? Oh, um, like a difficult yeah. plant like that would be um, the the bile. Oh, you still have one? Yeah. Yeah, there's there's my answer. <laughs> it's not that I don't like that plant. I like the texture of it. It's really pretty. It's yeah. like it's like surface peanuts for poor people. Exactly. <laughs> but um, I I I think I would just disappoint myself. That actually is the one plant that completely crisped up while I was away. Oh no. Does it still have Some leaves? Stuff. Yeah, it's still and it's still growing. Oh that's it's good. just all the leaves turned into nachos. 
<laughs> oh, nachos sound good. Oh, I, I had don't... nachos for dinner last oh, night. I want Taco Bell. This was, I'm gonna keep forgetting to put the freaking tags on it and it's gonna get us in big trouble. So this is P80. 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 What it's is like it? we're playing oh, bingo. P80. Yeah, we have to check off the plants on the We're invoice. basically doing inventory at the same time. Plant tours you hate to do. I know for Alice it's cleaning pond. I don't like cleaning pond either. I do it because I'm just like neurotic and I feel like it, it'll just like fester in me if I don't do it, but I don't enjoy it. Don't get oh, me I'm, wrong. I, but I'm just like, I am fine with rinsing. I don't need to boil it. I, I actually just have been rinsing mine lately, unless it was exposed to um, something like thrips or it like something was super, super rotty and disgusting and the pond smells like hot trash, then I'll sterilize. But if it's just like a simple repot, it was pretty straightforward. I've just been uh, rinsing. Yeah, I have no issue with rinsing. I just don't like the boiling. I don't, I can't find P80. Oh, no. Oh, sorry, you were in the middle of a thought. Oh, our Starbucks. Our Starbucks is here. Mm -hmm. Lauren sent us coffee. Thank you, Lauren. I'm still Jenny from the vlog. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I'm still. Little, I'm still little. Jenny from the vlog. <laughs> so have a little, not have a lot. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. <laughs> oh, I forgot that line. I always get really surprised when Alice knows the lyrics to a certain song because it just seems like something she's like. like I just listen, I listen to, listen like to that? classical music. Okay. I know, or Christmas music from. I want to say, let me guess. It starts probably in September. Oh, it doesn't end. Mm. It doesn't end. Yeah, one time when you came over for filming and you said you were having a stressful day, I played Christmas music yeah. when you arrived. <laughs> Santa is coming to town. Dun dun. <laughs> it's Santa Claus. Ah, I knew I was missing. I was like, Santa, Santa is coming to town. I tried. I tried. I'm not a Christmas girl, okay? You will be. Uh, honestly, give it like five years. I'm gonna dress up as Mrs. Claus every year. Yeah. Oh yeah, plant tours you hate doing. So oh. pond definitely. Um, Washing vessels is probably my number one ick in this in this hobby. Honestly, I don't like potting, um, repotting big plants. Oh yeah, that's annoying. Mm, yeah, I mean sometimes I'm into it if it's like like let's say I bought like a pot that I'm super excited about or I have this vision like my yucca. Obviously, it was very difficult to repot, but I was like stoked because I was just excited to see what it would look like. But if it's a plant that's just like bursting out of its pot and like needs attention, I'm just like, ugh. Yeah. They're so annoying. And so needy. Sometimes I just don't like watering. Oh, no, that's a really good one. They're like thirsty and I'm like, yeah. really? Like, really? <sighs> Already? Seriously? Wasn't it just yesterday? I mean, it was actually like <laughs> two weeks ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like I had grapes for dinner and I'm fine and you need water right now. <laughs> Come on. I actually have grapes for lunch to me too. I have grap. Grap, grap for lunch? I brought some grap. I forgot to ask you to bring the tahini. I can't find tahini anywhere. Oh really? Yeah, they don't have it at I home. guess I just don't use it um, as heavily as you do because that lasts me forever. Oh. I really want watermelon with tahini, but why is watermelon so expensive? Oh my god, you know what? I will get a watermelon for us on Friday. Okay. Okay. Mm. I have to go grocery shopping. But bring the tahini. <laughs> okay, I'll bring the tahini. I also have chamoy, which I don't think you've ever tried before. It's like a Mexican sort of like syrup for candies and fruit and stuff. Oh. It's sweeter, so it like balances the, the saltiness of the tahini. It's so good. I know, because like when I watch videos of people, or like the way that they serve it at yeah. Mexican places, and it's like completely coated in tahini, I think yeah. it's just like so sour. No, and usually they'll have chamoy on it too. Oh, to and balance. if you, yeah, it's so good. Um, okay, so yeah, those are our least favorite plant chores. I, I think I mentioned in um, another video that I wish I had like a little elf from the North Pole that was just like around the house just doing all the plant things I don't like doing. Like when I'm done repotting, like he just grabs it and just like washes it right away. You just like Toss it and he's like, yeah, got I it, got mom. It. 
It's like Dobby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one I already told her. Why haven't we seen Alice's man? We need more eye candy. <laughs> He's, he is eye. He's eye candy in a different way. Okay. He's like, um, he's just so precious. He's very pure, and he's way more camera shy than I am. Yeah, I I feel like if he ever sat in front of the camera, he actually may disintegrate into yeah, nothing. Yeah, he would. Like, yeah, yeah. And I don't think he. Yeah, he doesn't want to be on camera. Maybe one day. I think it would have to be really natural, like. Okay, yeah, like sit yeah. down and, and like, like talk. ask questions and yeah. like answer. But maybe if you like turn the camera to him and was just like, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. then you turn it away. But he is very, very precious, and I do hope one day she she shows him, <laughs> makes his debut <laughs> on the YouTube. Oh gosh, ow my back. Okay, I'm working on L88. Ow, you. This chair is so wobbly. I think it's gonna collapse by the end of this, by the end of the day, pretty sure. Now I'm feeling like all sorts of guilt for saying he's not like a head turner. Well, I mean, I think he, I don't think every man desires to be like wanted like <laughs> that. Like, especially men who are like secure with themselves and stuff. Yeah. Like G does not strike me as the kind of guy that's just like, I need everybody to love me. Also, um, I don't know if you are this way. I don't like look at men or people in general, just like in the street or like um, in, a, in, a, in a room where I don't know any people. I'm not like checking people out. So I don't think anyone is necessarily a head turner. No, I, I definitely check out guys. Oh, okay. Like that one day, I think I vlogged it. I was on the way somewhere and this cop came out of his car. I like... Like, I felt like I swallowed my tongue. It was so... Oh. And I went home and I told Vince, and I was like, I saw the most beautiful cop on the road today. And he's cool with it, you know? Yeah. Like, we, we always talk about, like, pretty people we see or whatever. But I think for me, it's not that I'm checking them out, but I definitely notice and look at women more. Like yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Someone yesterday. Came, oh, yeah. I hope oh. she doesn't watch my videos, but someone came to pick up a plant yesterday from... Lauren, and I was like, bah, 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 she bah, was, bah, 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 bah. she was like angelic. No, She's gorgeous, like, and she had like this strawberry red hair, and like with like green eyes. Yeah, and I feel like she had a little bit of freckles, and, and she was like, just really nice. Sweet. So she just like had this like illuminating smile. I was like, Suck, wow. Suck. Um, I think I got it on camera. <laughs> Remember? Oh, you did. We were yes, still recording. You did, yeah. You're like, damn, she was pretty. She was really pretty. Yeah. Oh, so I, but I do have, I do love, I do love a redhead. Same here. Yeah. I mean, my boyfriend has red hair only in his beard. That's true. His That's true. His head hair is not. So he doesn't like being called a redhead because he's like not a redhead. But I was wait. like, your beard is on your head. True. What, wait, what color is his hair? Is it brown? It's like brown, like a light brown. Was he blonde when he was born? Yeah. I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. I mean, I don't, yeah. Anyway, I don't think Vince would be offended if I was like, oh, you're not a head turner. Like, we, it's like a running joke that, like, when we first met, me and my husband, we did not, barely even notice each other at all. Like, we were mm. in the same group. I gravitated towards his friend. He gravitated toward mine. Yeah. And we probably said, like, two words to each other that day, like, hi, bye. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then, so, eventually, you got to a point where you were like, I must have you. Yes, because once I got to know him, I yeah. was like, I will literally jump off a cliff right now if you don't. If we can't spend be together, your life yeah. <laughs> no pressure, but there is a cliff right here. There is a life on the line. I will throw myself off this cliff. So, yeah. And for me, it's like a guy doesn't even have to be like physically attractive. If he's like funny or has a good personality mm -hmm. or smells good, yeah. I'm just like, hello. Hi. Same with girls, too. She's really, really super straight. Like, she, she her sexuality is like this. It's a straight oh, line. It's you, so straight. Um, whose um, video was it on? Someone commented, was like, does Alice drive a Subaru? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drive a Subaru. No, she's not. She is not lesbian. She no. is not bisexual. She is extremely, yeah. extremely straight. I think it's, straight. it's my deep voice that makes me sound like a Subaru driver. But I'm I not. don't. Maybe because I know what kind of car you drive. Like, I just don't see you as a Subaru driver at all. And I know how straight you are. <laughs> and I, didn't, I had no idea 
um, th- about that Subaru innuendo. I didn't know either until my sister told me about it because yeah. she drives a Subaru. Oh, um, right, because you asked her. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> my sexuality is, it's a little like this. <laughs> It's She's like the squiggle straight, emoji a, that yeah. we use. Yes, it's exactly like the squiggle emoji I use. Did you cross up L88 already? No, you didn't ask me to. I did, <laughs> and I have it on camera. Oh. <laughs> when? <laughs> when? Well, you know what? When I'm editing this video, I'm going to send Where's you a that? little clip. <clears throat> okay, I'm working on L88. 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 I can also do this, you know. You don't have to. That's true, but where are we going to put it? I know, I'm probably going to get it all wet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give it back to you. It's going to be like soggy. Here's your wet cloth, Lauren. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh my word. Natal L88? Yes. What if I just caught before that? M- Who's screwing up now? M25. I know. This is too many things to keep track of. I need to get into a better rhythm. <laughs> Well, you do have one more step. I feel like I'm in a good rhythm now, but you have one more step than I do. Do you know what the next question is? Um, yes. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Will Alice make a makeup tutorial for us? She, the, the amount of times she has asked her this question is hilarious. <laughs> and I still hold out hope that one day she'll say yes. You know, it's not that like I think I'm hideous without makeup or anything. But I don't feel like myself with make without makeup. I feel like the way that I've done my makeup for like I don't know ten years now is just my identity. So I I don't know if I want to put that out into the world. And that's your right. I don't feel like anyone yeah. should ever put themselves in an uncomfortable position for the sake of a video. But one thing that I would be open to doing, and just literally nobody asked for this. They all asked for the eye makeup tutorial. Yeah. But. Um, I would be open to having like my eyes already done and then do my like base, like my foundation, my blush, my contour, Uh stuff like that. Well, we have different eyes, but I was like, maybe you could do it on my eyes instead. But also like that, that's the part of get ready with me is that I like the most is when they're like, like, you know, beauty sponging their foundation in yeah doing the blush especially with like cream product it's so soothing to watch yeah it's like ASMR Mm -hmm. um but yeah I guess it's not that she's like gatekeeping anything it's more of a comfortability level yeah I'm sure she would love to share it maybe you can do it on like a piece of paper (laughs) or or like yeah I don't know like a model I think I would love to that's one um, goal of mine. I would actually really love to be able to figure out a way to do my eyes. That's like very minimal and I'd still feel like myself. But I haven't found that yet. I do trials of it on the weekend when I'm like not going to go out. I'm like, oh, I'll try this like minimal eye look. What I'm if like, you did it without the idiot. shadow and just the liner? And did more of like the brown, like the darker brown. But, then it but that's still, the that's same. still, yeah. yeah. So, same thing. I was thinking color. like just shadow without the wing and without, you know. But I honestly, my eyes, look, I look like I'm 12. And I want to look my age of like almost 40. Well, no matter how much or how little makeup I put on, I always look like I'm prepubescent. No, you wouldn't, no. Uh-huh. No. I look maybe really, I could do her makeup. I really, I honestly look really stupid with eyeshadow on. I no, really you don't. do. No, I promise. No, I promise you. I promise you, it looks so dumb. You wouldn't laugh. it be so funny if I did my eye makeup? <laughs> you should. I think you, wouldn't that be funny? Yeah. You should. actually have totally different eye shapes. Though. I know, and and it like droops down. I hate yeah. my eyes. My I eyes, hate my eyes because I have a monolid, and like nothing really works for monolids. Maybe we can do it for my vlog channel. Yeah. That was like fun. nobody has ever seen me with full makeup on. I barely know what I look like. With. And it'd be so much easier to film because the camera would be on you. Yeah. I don't need to like look at a mirror. Yeah, exactly. Okay, one fine, day. Fine, fine. Maybe day. for um, Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> for no good reason. Happy Christmas. <laughs> that it's one's bigger. so pretty. I know. Look at this one. This is a dark night. Oh, I think I showed this in the video we did. Oh, my yeah. Product showcases and on. 
it's so so dark like so pretty super dark okay um mm -hmm. banana on pizza yay or nay banana i've literally never there's heard your that. answer i have never heard of anyone putting a banana on their on their pizza it seems wrong maybe a dessert and stuff yeah but not like with tomato, tomato sauce, sauce and sausages and that's coming from two people that like pineapple on pizza yes exactly banana is such a strong flavor too it is but you know what here's a fun fact that nobody asked for bananas actually originated from i'm just kidding um <laughs> that's not what i was gonna say but there's a <laughs> there's a filipino snack that seems so weird but i tried it once and it wasn't bad it's rice Wait, rice, bananas, Vienna sausage, and pickles. Yeah, it does kind of trigger your gag reflex a little bit thinking about it, but it just, surprisingly, it just wasn't that bad. I think for me, it was more so the texture it's of the delicious banana. Delicious or it wasn't that bad? It wasn't that bad. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to be disrespectful to the Filipino culture or anything, but... <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm open to trying anything, but I just can't see it tasting... Good? Because banana will just overpower everything. And the texture, it's like mushy. Yeah, maybe plantains. Yeah, plantains would be good, I think. Should I just do this one? Bananas. Narrow dark. Maybe they meant ananas, which is pineapple. <laughs> I don't think that was... Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Um, okay, so yeah, it's going to be a hard no for both of us. Yeah. When are we getting a Poo Poo Pee Pee podcast? I love oh, that name, Poo Poo Pee Pee podcast. Yeah, don't keep the people waiting, she says. Yeah, what do we call it though? Poo Poo Pee Pee podcast. Two poos in a pod. <laughs> two pee pees in a poo pod. <laughs> no, or just two peas in a pod, but peas spelled P E E S. Yeah, yeah, the podcast we keep talking about. It. <laughs> um definitely want to do it it's just finding a time to like sit down and think about it is yeah. what's been difficult and I haven't even really like figured out what I would need setup wise because we can't we can't really do it together although it would be way 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 easier to mm -hmm. record together and people also like record it on camera and then upload it to YouTube that way oh yeah well. that's true that's it, true. Yeah. It doesn't mean that every episode has to be filmed that way. And also, I feel like everybody is starting a podcast. It's like, how do you even make yourself stand out in front of... Honestly, that's, let's just do that. Then we just need mics and stuff. Mm -hmm. I could just buy another Rode mic. You already have a good mic, I think. I do have a good mic. Yeah. Yeah. I so, anyway. But also, like thinking about like how are we gonna like sync up all the audios and stuff and I know the, how, how you see much we're just like how 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 do we how? do this it's too far I know it can be done I just someone do it for us I yeah I just haven't um done enough research and it's like sitting down to even research it it it's just not something with if you have ADHD that <laughs> you want to do yeah um without also like trying not to spend money <laughs> Yeah, on, that's like so much equipment. That is key. How do we do this for free? <laughs> Not free, but yeah, I mean, like with what we already have. I actually oh. have a mic, but I don't think it, it's compatible with my camera. The the mic right. that I use for voiceover. Well, I think you have to like record it and then. Um, yeah, no, Final Cut Pro can sync audio pretty well. Oh, you I know? didn't. Know you that. merge it with your clip. Yeah. I did not it's quite, know. It actually that. is really easy to do that. Maybe we'll just do that. But um, not podcast, but we are going to launch Discord. Discord. Just not, not content, per se. Well, it might, it might already be up by the time this video goes up. It, it sh or no, should. it should definitely be up because there's like nothing left for us to do except for just tell we'll you just guys about it. it and for you guys to join. Yeah. Um, and I don't know anything about Discord. Do you? Not beyond what my sister has taught me. I swear, I was like a boomer. She's like, how do you not understand this? Wait, there's so many buttons. <laughs> there's so many bits and bobs and... Yeah. It just seems really daunting, you know? Um, yeah. So I we're kind of banking on, like, 
you guys to to um kind of keep keep yeah. things going because we yeah. don't really know what we're doing but also so many people are like always saying i want to meet people i want to meet plant friends and stuff and mm -hmm. that's kind of like the whole idea behind the discord is so that we can have a community of like like-minded people because i i personally think that our subscribers are like the funniest and like most just like the most nicest, wonderful people yeah, and i just want really you guys are. to know each other you know yeah I, I that's one thing that like I get really sad about is when we get those comments that are like, man, I wish I had like a friend like this or something. And I know, I know, there are many of you out there that would like just get along so well. Yes. So the the Discord really isn't for us. We want it to be more for you guys to connect, and then that way, like, you guys can ask each other questions and answer each other's questions, and like just be like mm -hmm. sounding boards. And we're obviously gonna be there too, but yeah. it's, like not. It's not about us. It's not about but us. But it's like, you know, yeah. a community. Exactly. So, uh, but we, we want to, or we want to launch it, and we will, and by the time you're watching this, click the link in my description. I think it's a link. or And I think you'll you... have to, like, request to join. I think so, because we don't want just, like, anyone joining, because there's so many, like, trolls out there, mm. and I have a lot of haters. <laughs> they may <laughs> infiltrate it. and I thought you were going to say they the mate. Fun. They, they're multiplying. No, please don't mate with <laughs> each other. Um, so yeah. Anyway, that's that. It's so fun to pop the small ones. The big ones are stressing me out. I'm sweating. I know. When you were talking about your yucca as a big plant, I was like, oh, I meant like much smaller than that. Oh. But it's still like a big plant. And like getting the moss pole on and stuff. Yeah. I hate potting crawlers. That's mm. I'm like, I just wish everything climbed. Oh, question. I want to try and answer as many as possible, mm. but we also have hella shit to do today. Mm. Um, I would love to know why neither of you use Leka as a singular substrate. That's a really good question. That's a solid question. I, I actually do. I just never show that on camera. Mm. Like, what, what plant right now do you have just in Leka that you can think of? Um, my alopecia cupria. Oh, your cuckoo is a mecca. Yeah. Um, You're so full of surprises. <laughs> I used to propagate so much in Lekka. We were huge Lekka stands before. Yeah. I, I honestly think that um, I like Lekka a lot as a substrate, and I find it so easy to use and so easy to water, easy to pot things up. Um, it's kind of harder to find because to get the quantity that you need, you have to get, like, humongous bags usually at like a hydroponic store and then it's kind of like a hassle to get there mm -hmm. um and the aesthetic thing like i don't i'm not i just like the look of pond more than like same same but the cocoa puffs like grayish leka that we've been getting from lauren has been really nice i would I, I would happily use that as like a singular substrate but I also find that, I don't know, maybe it's just all in my head, but I find that I have more robust growth in pond. Like, I feel mm. like all the plants that I just used in Leka, like, weren't really growing the way I wanted to. And I and I feel like it has something to do with, like, the types of fertilizers that people use when they're purely growing in Leka. You know, they use, like, the three-part. Yeah. Um, but I just wasn't happy with some of the plants that I had in Leka, and then... I don't know. As soon as I get got those same plants into pond, it was like fine. Yeah, I prefer pond as a substrate. Yeah. But there's like people that grow these massive like I feel like monsteras do really well in Lekka. Yeah. Or at least root really well in Lekka, but I just I don't reach for it often. I I haven't had Lekka in stock in my house for a while too. I do like using Lekka at the bottom of vessels though. Oh yeah. That's, for me, it's just, I don't know, it's a lighter layer, a chunkier layer, more air pockets in it than pond, not as heavy. Um, and I think, like, that person, like, who asked the question yeah. knows that you use it, but just never on its own. On its own, yeah. Did I tell you, ugh, did I tell you C82 already? Uh, I'm going to say no, or I wasn't listening. Whoops. C82. Well, I don't remember saying. What was it? Anthurium Dark Knight. 
Baroque piano. Oh. Okay. Stop it. Okay. Um, thoughts on major root haircuts? If more, if there are more roots than foliage on a mature established plant. I love root trimming. I I do it all the time. Yeah, I would um, do it, especially on a mature plant, or. Um, if like you just gave it like a major trim, like you chopped off a bunch of like leaves or something. I don't know. But I, I, just... I, I wouldn't do it if like, I would just be scared to do it if I didn't grow that plant to begin with. So I don't really know how it's gonna react. Yeah. But if, it, if I grew it and like that root system all grew under uh, my care, then I would totally be open to it. Yeah, I think that it's just like not shown very often, like, trimming roots but it's something that like has been done historically in in the hobby especially even people growing like commercially mm -hmm. that you know they chop roots off but it's just not a lot of people show it so yeah just like less common knowledge for people but you can definitely root trim you can see um uh, kunzo, kunzo. He'll have like a mature specimen and he will just like, he'll pull it out of this big pot and he'll just take a knife and just cut the entire bottom off. I don't do that. I still try and find like where the roots lead and yeah. I'll, you know, separate it that way, but he'll just straight up like chop it. And you know, it's Kunzo. He grows like beautiful, majestic plants. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, you should give it a try first on a plant that maybe you don't care about as much and just see how it reacts and see if it's for you but i do it all the time i don't know if alice is a huge root chopper i feel like she's a bigger propagator than i am like rather than chopping the roots we'll just chop the whole stem oh yeah yeah um i would i would only do it if i was like there's no way i could fit it into this pot and i don't have anything bigger mm -hmm. which does happen yeah so like out of desperation really mm -hmm. yeah i would do it less for like like i don't i don't feel like finding a big pot. i would still try to find a bigger pot yeah but once it gets to that size I, I would be too tempted to just chop the plant yeah exactly um would you rather find a thousand bed bugs living in your house or one person living in your house <gasps> that's such a legit oh question oh my god i was like when you're like i was no. for sure gonna say the other thing until yeah. I heard what the other thing was. Oh my god, that's like straight from. There are so many horror movies based off that premise. Oh my god, bed, bed bugs. Yeah. I'd rather get bed oh, bugs. Oh, bed bugs. I would yeah. rather find bed bugs. I would rather find bed bugs too. At least oh you can god. like get rid of bed bugs and there's like yeah, because I'm like solution for it. I have to with you now. No, I know. I don't want to, but you you brought this upon yourself. The things you've seen. <laughs> things you may have seen. <laughs> yeah, all they say. Bed bugs for sure. And then, like, that's just like, oh, well, then I guess I can't leave the house for a while and then nobody can talk to me and see me. Yeah. Like, oh, God, I got bed God. bugs, you know? Stay away. <laughs> These damn bed bugs. But yeah. And I don't know why my mind immediately goes to like a strange man living in my house. And like, strange, like weird. weird. <laughs> well, if you're in my house. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Because, like, haven't you heard those stories where people like found. Like went into their attic and found someone's been living in there and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Holy crap. That's like my worst. Okay, along just with that, like hidden cameras is like my worst. <gasps> like whenever I lived in an apartment, <gasps> I'm like, oh, I always suss out the landlord. Like, are you a pervert? Are there like cameras mm. in this house? But there are like tools now that you can use to like scan your whole house to make sure there are no cameras. And I highly recommend if you ever stay at a hotel or an Airbnb anywhere make sure you are checking mirrors you're checking showers for cameras because it's so common now mirrors yeah because there's like the two-way mirrors and sometimes they'll put like a, a tiny little camera yeah ew there's something at the trick right like you touch a mirror and if you can like touch your finger or something or not touch your finger it shows you if it's like a two-way mirror especially at like motels like creepy motels sorry i'm like unlocking a new fear for alex just stay home. Just don't go anywhere. You're the one that wants to go to a cabin. Actually, okay. I want to go to a cabin too. Yeah. Yeah. We could like have a campfire. <laughs> now and she's... then once the campfire is done, you just like 
walk inside <laughs> and go into your bed. Yeah. We get rained on, we'll, and then uh, we get soaking wet. You come inside and just sit by the fireplace. Oh, that's oh, so that nice. sounds so nice. That sounds so nice. Oh. Clap, <laughs> clap. <laughs> Edit that out. Oh, I got the super round one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at that. I featured this one in a video earlier this month. And this super round VTI is like my new favorite thing on this planet. I think I need to put this in a boat. In a boat? Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> she said push it. Her words were verbatim. She did? Yep. She, she said, Just uh, don't worry too much about root trimming unless they're rotted. It goes faster when I'm in a rush. I have to just look past the nasty chunks and get it done. Oh. That's not, that's not what she said verbatim. That's, Push it. Verbatim. Uh, yeah, verbatim. She said that. Push it to the limit. <laughs> I don't see the middle. I'm going to let Alice answer this next one because if I try and explain it, it's going to sound like a bunch of gibberish. Huh? So, huh? can you explain what Ethereum Pappy clones are, like Swamp Bunny, Fort Sherman, etc.? Okay. Okay. She can do it. I believe in her. I think I can do it. Okay, so. Papillolaminum as a species, um, I've heard it being described, I think there's a botanical term called plastic, which means like a ton of variability in the way it looks. So that means that um, depending on where it is, they've evolved to have different traits. And the numbered clones that you're probably thinking of um, they have been numbered, like when they were collected, they, I assume, grew them out for some time to see like how specific traits persist within the plant and they were different enough that they gave them different names and the numbers are just a little bit simpler. So um, I think this is not a secret anymore. I know this person doesn't like to have his name out there, but like literally, if I go onto the Facebook groups, everyone just uh, is saying his name, R.A. stands for So he's the guy that collected all these paps that are, if you're thinking like pap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to like, I don't know, 14 or something. Um, there, it's, sometimes they, people don't say the R.A., but the R.A. is always kind of there. And then there's ones that like are distinctively unique that came from or like were cultivated by certain growers and nurseries so there's like the re-gardens one um i think scott cohen has a few so they're just it's all the same species but they're very um variable so Isolated. when you yeah, yeah so when you like have one type of clone you can expect like certain characteristics to persist um, if it's like cloned by cutting so if you breed them you're not guaranteed to have these things but one thing about like the pap clones that are really popular is that um, they tend to be ones that have mutated into like really weird shapes so if you like went to Panama and like went into the forest and looked at paps, they're probably going to be a little bit more normal looking than the ones that we really like that have like the crazy lobes and the wide sinuses and mm -hmm. just like really sinister looking. They're yeah. kind of like more mutated forms of papillolamina. Yeah. It, and it's kind of goes along the same lines of like, let's say you hybridize two plants, right? Like you have, let's take my, my hybrid, for example, that I made. It was a crystal mag with a forgetty eye. Mm -hmm. You can't say that all crystal mag forgetty eyes are going to be the same. It really depends on what each of the mother plants look like because someone could isolate like a, you know, a variety of, or not a variety, they could isolate features of a certain forgetty eye and like do it with another like crystal mag that maybe has other distinct features that they like and then clone, or not clone, but you know, hybridize both of those two together. So that's going to look different than if you did like a regular like silver vein for Getty Eye with yeah sort of your normal crystal mag and so you know there's I've seen conversations where it's just like oh why is this so expensive if, if this hybrid has been around and it's floating around everywhere and it really just depends on like where it came from and who bred it 
because they may have a plant that's like highly sought after for its distinct characteristics. So kind of along the same lines with the pap, same plant, but then just like isolated yeah. characteristics of. But even like, um, like, so Amanda's RA5, for example. So the RA5 cells that she has, I have, Lauren has, they all look quite different because it's that plant itself. Um, whereas if I took my RA5 and then chopped it, every, every plant from that should look like mine, which has like round overlapping lobes, really, really bullate. And then other ones are quite looking quite smooth. So you're less likely to have like really bumpy one coming out from propagating that by, by cutting. Yeah. Hopefully that answered your question. I'm so glad I had you answer that and not me. It's the same with the Carla's. There's like numbered Carla's. Yeah. And I think those are all so from... Uh... Mm -hmm. It's just easier because if you're, if you give like the Carla, like a Carla clone that has distinct features, its own name, it just gets confusing. So it's easier to just number it so that yeah. you know it's a clone of it. Okay, next question is, um, it says, when did you step back and realize that you really, or when did you step back and think, geez, I guess I really do love plants. Like when was that like moment for you where you're like, holy crap, I am in this, <laughs> in it to win it. Oh. I, I wish I had a moment like that. Freaking hell. You didn't? You don't? Well, that's not a fun answer. <laughs> Oh, well, kind of, I don't know if this is really answering that question, but a moment that kind of like proved to myself that like I actually do really love plants is how much I miss them when I'm away. Oh, that's so precious and sweet. <laughs> like I miss my plants. You have that feeling too. Oh, absolutely. It's like, I think I said it in a video once where um, I was like, you know, I used to get really sad when... I would leave California and have to leave my family and like I just mm. didn't want to go home but now like I hit the one leaf mark and I'm just like I just want to go back to my plants like mm. you know you like saw a new leaf that was coming out and you want to know what it looks like now I would say yeah we kind of have the same idea so I'm repotting some of these luxurians now feast your eyes on this even though I don't have product showcase on don't <laughs> oh god there you go. This one kind of looks like it's a Lux Silver, but it's not. It's just a regular. But like, look at how silvery these leaves are. But that's normal though. It's like- Is it? Yeah. yeah like it like Juvenile and uh, Luxurians are always really gray. So it's like, it's like saying Anthurium Luxurians bumpy. <laughs> but then if they said, had bumpy on it people would be like wow it's so, so bumpy, bumpy. It's extra bumpy <laughs> okay i don't get this one plants bean collections for chewy what's chewy is slang. that like a slang that's slang or something urban dictionary god we are so old <laughs> i'm gonna be like chewy what is chewy i hope chewy. we're not saying something mean is that like oh the opposite of trendy no longer in style, out of date. Another way to describe aesthetics, people experiences that are basic. Chewy, wow. Or like, it's basically uncool. Hey, it's not chewy. Is it a legitimate quest, uh, collection? Like a collector's thing? Or like it's um, kind of like a lame thing that millennials do? <laughs> I think it can be asked, like interpreted that way too. Basically, is like the house plant hobby, just like a like lame thing? and like yeah. yeah and like uncool. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I'm, I'm sure. So Gen, well, I mean not Gen Z right now, but like every young generation likes to make fun of things that old people do. And then, honestly, I don't give a shit what Gen Z thinks. Mm -hmm. There are some really cool Gen Z people that just like get it, but then I yeah. think they're... But they like to say, oh, like millennials do this. I was like, okay, yeah, I do that, so... Yeah, I wear skinny you jeans know? and... I use the little crying laugh emoji. Yeah. I like that emoji. Well, you know what's ironic is like, there's um, 
a, like a lot of like Gen Z people that are making fun of the fact that like millennials still wear skinny jeans, but then they're wearing everything that we used to wear like in middle school. Yeah. And ele- like yeah. even back to elementary school, I'm like, yeah, I was like, did that first. I like you, you look like Claire circa 1995 right now. Yeah, and not that that's a bad thing, no, but we're just we saying. We did that first. We did it first. <laughs> like you can't say we're not cool when you look just you look like, like yeah. we did. You look like I did when I was 12. But you know what? That era was like the best. I would like go to Abercrombie and like get all these like new polo shirts and be so excited to go to school. Like my crush is gonna die when he sees me. My favorite fashion era of my childhood is like, what year would have that been? Like 92 or something like that. And like, like Chucks were really in, Doc Martens Mm -hmm. were really in, Mm -hmm. baggy, um, just grunge. Yeah, grunge. Like the plaid shirts. Was, I thought I was so cool. That's when I was like super, I, I feel like, I, I, are you allowed to say this word still tomboy? I don't know. I don't know if it's acceptable. Sorry if it's not acceptable anymore. Millennials are learning, okay? We've lived <laughs> through like three different worlds. Yeah. I mean, I still think we're the best generation. We're biased. But that but was, was like the, that, I feel like that was a very, you know, unique fashion era mm-hmm. that didn't really recycle you know it's not it's not 60s 70s yeah. 50s 30s like it was very unique very to that time. very unique it's hard to be unique now i feel like mm. everything's kind of been done anyway i don't even remember what the question was oh chuggy oh chuggy yeah um i don't know i i don't i feel like it, it would be chuggy to people like only gen z saying like oh my god like House plants, yeah. Like, with millennials, love their house plants. I think that, it, that's a fact. Yeah, exactly. And I don't think that we could answer it because we're biased. <laughs> yeah. So it I is, guess, and, and also it's like it's such a harmless like, um, like if it's basic, it's such a harmless thing that it's like so mild that it's yeah. not even worth talking about. Yeah. Who cares <laughs> if I'm basic? I'm not trying to impress anyone anymore. No, and like. It, it is true. no home is complete without plants. It's not sterile otherwise. That's the hill I'm gonna die on. Mm. The house is not a home without plants. Yep. Here's no offense a- to Gen Z. Yeah, no. <laughs> I my sister's Gen Z. She drives me freaking crazy. She drives me absolutely crazy. But love her. Can I get that code? Code. Oh. Oh, look, I'm writing things down. Oh, thank you. Okay, that's that's yeah. actually. And then once it fills up, I'll give it to you. Okay. Okay, so uh, actually, I like this question because I've never asked you this question before, and I would like to know the answer to it. And it's how many times slash how often do you inoculate with great white? Mm. Um, religiously, when I repot, and then in an ideal world, I'd reinoculate like once every three months or so. Okay, and then good. in reality, it's when I have like. Let's say I mixed up a like a watering can of great white for repot, and I didn't use it all up. And then I'll go around to other plants and inoculate again. So it's really mm-hmm. not like properly done for the re- reintroducing yeah. stuff. Um, I would love to get better at it. I feel like I do it like every month and a half. Is that too much? No, I mean, and I'm not doing like a lot. Like it it's goes just... so far that like, you don't never go through that container. That's not too much. Okay, I don't know. Yeah. One thing I really need to get better at is using um, the TPS liquid soil, just like the beneficial bacteria. I'm very bad at at doing that too. I think with all the things that we're using now, it's kind of hard to be like, okay, when should I use this and when should I use that? Yeah. Because you can't, you really can't just like mix it all up. In a perfect world, I would be able to just mix any of them together without any nutrient lockout, with any anything clashing. Mm-hmm. But you have to do things in a certain order. Okay, um, so that's the answer for that. And then the other question for Alvin is, does she like Hoya flowers? Yes. <laughs> she does. I think they look adorable. I also have trypophobia, but it doesn't trigger my trypophobia. Yes. My trypophobia, I think, like people try to like jokingly trigger it. Like my sister always like, oh, look at these dots. And I'm like, those dots don't do it. Sick burn, it's- bro. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's like, 
Does that dots be? that are like quite uniform, but it shouldn't be that way. Like it's some freak of nature that the dots are like that. Yeah, like the Hoya flowers. Why are they so? But they're they kind of like look like they're meant to be. It's like a they look like little little candies to me. Mm -hmm. So I think they're freaking adorable. If Hoya flowers were just like two or three, like that, I would probably think. What about so the cute. um? Is it? Is it Caudata that has like the one? No, no, it's not Caudata. Oh, like, it, the, the big really one. The really big one, yeah. And it's just like a cup, right? And it's just single. Yeah, I, I don't mind that. It's mm. not like I just hate. What about the um the one that look like whisks? I don't mind those ones. For and some the one that reason. looks like the the shooting dragon. Yeah, don't mind those. Okay. It's, it's when the... it's like a round circular cluster. It's just so disgusting to me. I just can't deal with it. But the whisks are in like kind of like a round formation too. i don't know why th that one doesn't bother me as much mm. but like i will admit like there are hoya flowers like especially the fuzzy ones mm. i'll throw in a photo here that's the one i'm thinking about caudata is fuzzy oh. isn't it I'm i think sure joe just posted yeah. it so here's the photo of um our friend joe she's like the hoya queen um she just took this i will admit it was a really cute photo um but like all her flowering hoyas at once yeah and she has one that has like yeah the fuzzy flowers and i think it's adorable but i don't like that there's so many that are clustered perfectly if it was just like two or three at a time like two three flowers i would have zero problem with it and i probably would really like hoya flowers it's just the clustering of it and the and the i don't know it reminds me of um what are those are they stink bug eggs oh yeah 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 guys yeah. don't google it don't yeah. and i'm not throwing in a photo of it don't ever google stink bug eggs you yeah. will vomit if you have trypophobia. It is absolutely out of this world. Um, so, oh, okay, speaking of trypophobia, you know how they say, like, when when your trypophobia is triggered, you have, like, it's like a fight or flight kind of reaction. So you either have the urge to run away or the urge to destroy that thing. Do you normally go destroy or run away? I run away. I usually go destroy. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> I am not surprised. Like, there are multiple instances, especially your stories from Uganda. She's from, she lived in Uganda. I'm not for from a, Uganda. <laughs> so she's from Uganda. No, she lived there for a little bit. How long were you living Like there? six months. Yeah. The stories, you guys. I'm not going to say any of the stories, but the stories, the stories it's, she's it's, told. It's, it's wild. Like, it, it was, it feel, feels like another lifetime. I don't even know that person anymore because it's just like... I can't believe I did like, that. Who is she? I was really young, so I I would I did things back then that I would never do now, like freaking mosh pit. Are you joking? Oh my gosh! What the <laughs> heck? Like I wouldn't have made it out of their life. Yeah, that would have been the end of me. Yeah, I did so many things that I, I'm like looking back. I cannot believe I did. That's wild. Um, I wonder if we would have been friends if we knew each other. No, we wouldn't have. <laughs> you yeah. said that many times. And I guess <laughs> I just do some of the stories of you. In your youth, I'm mean, you're like, I don't think I would have approved of you. I was like, I was like, kind of adventurous, but like kind of straight laced at the same time. Oh yeah, so, I didn't hang out with losers. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I I would not do like I would never touch drugs. Um, don't and do drugs. <laughs> it's just um, I thought it was just like I have this when I when people talk about drugs. I don't know why. I just like I want to walk away. I don't know why. She hates it. I just hate it so much. Walk away from drugs. And it's not like I have some like you know trauma with drugs because I've never really like known people in my personal life that did it. I just don't know why. I just like really don't want to be even like talking about it. Yeah. Weird. It's not weird. Drugs aren't good for you. <laughs> Except I'm the opposite. Um, I was really terrible in yeah. my in my youth. My, I had a very, very strict dad growing up. He never let me do anything. Couldn't hang out with my friends. I was at home every single day. So as soon as I lived on my own, I just went buck wild, you guys. It's a, it's a miracle I made it out of there alive. Yeah, I don't, I can't say I went buck wild. No, I went buck wild. But I think part of it is like, because I know that like my parents are quite they're not super conservative but they do have like a very strong set of like beliefs and morals but i also knew that 
they would never like stop me from doing anything. So yeah. when I was like, I'm moving to Uganda, they're like, oh man. Oh man. My dad, <laughs> my dad would have collapsed like to the floor. Yeah. He was like, this guy is just going to be using you for your money. I'm like, what money? <laughs> what money? Do you want to see my bank account right now? <laughs> Anything, it's the other way around, dude. I'm using him for his money. I know. Um, was the question? I don't know. <laughs> Does Alvin like Hoya flowers? <laughs> Is that actually the question? Actually, no. How did we get here? How did we get to Uganda? <laughs> I know. And we talk about drugs. drugs. <laughs> you know, I will relive it, but oh, interesting. Okay, let's answer maybe three more. <laughs> um, what plants? <laughs> what plants right now make your loins quiver? <laughs> oh. oh. For me, it's the Anthurium Circus Peanuts. Mm. That one I want so bad. I love it. I love her. It's, love it's it got to be an Anthurium. Mm -hmm. um, I've pretty much gotten all of my wish list philodendrons at this point. Like yeah. the ones that were really, really high up there. Like, yeah. I've checked them all off and um, I don't really have like a desire to check off a lot of my Ethereum wish list just because I don't have confidence in myself. <laughs> but I yeah, think, I would um, love a circus peanuts. Probably like my top wish list on Ethereum right now. And I might contradict myself at a later date and say that one is, but off the top of my head, I think it is the Carla. Mm, someone, someone hooked this girl up with the Carla, the poor I mean, thing. Amanda sent me a little stump and I killed it. Yeah. But in my defense, it was about this big. It was really, it was really, like, it, it, was was really tiny. it was smaller than a centimeter. I think she referred to it as a turd nugget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was, I think, more like a Hail Mary kind of yeah. cut that she was like, this is the most I can get. <laughs> um, I feel still super awful for not um, bringing that one back to life. I know. I've killed way too many plants from Amanda. I still have... Really? Such sorrow. Yeah, my red crystal. I killed the Nigro Lemon of Gigi from her. Um, I thought I killed my um, Lux. What's that Crystal one? Lux? No, Nigel? it's my Lux crossed with the. Oh, the Ralph Lynam. Ralph Lynam. Port Truman. But it's very much alive. Yeah. It was a stump and then it oh, resurrected. Really? I was like, oh, who are yay. you? <laughs> um, mine is like. They're like elongated leaves. They're really cute. Aww. Can't wait till that one gets really big. What about your Ace Lux? I can't wait for that one to grow up. I have an Ace Lux. Okay. I'll check. Oh no. Okay. Yes, please See, check. Stop sending me plants. Remember that it was called Card Bump? Oh yeah. Frick. J5. I'm sure I have it. I feel like we're like racing against the clock here, trying to get all. We have to repot like all of these behind. plants in total. No pressure. <laughs> oh, why do I keep getting up? Oh my gosh, I drooped all over my pants. Oh no. Oh no. Another question. We're Another on a one. Oh, we're oh on by a the roll. way, we are um, repotting oh, Bessies right now. I am not brave enough to own one of these again because I am terrible at growing them. This one, this plant is a bitch. These questions are fun. Yesterday yeah. when we were doing plant stuff, we were just like pitch quiet, like dead silent, we're just like, talking. Oh yeah, we were trying to listen to true crime and then like I couldn't concentrate on it. I'm like, what happened again? I know, what? Who's Carlos like, you know what? And you're like, <laughs> Celine Dion, okay? Let's just stop. She was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like um, when they had that Glee viewing party on on the office and like you're oh, Kelly yeah. and I'm Phyllis and she's like who's, who's Glee? <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your favorite seedling soil mix for them to root? I never root seedlings in soil. I don't either. Like um, although if I, I, it was grown from seed and it's already a seedling it would have roots. Yeah. So it would well, just be like. Well actually I did grow my seedlings in soil for a little bit but I didn't really like it. Like you Put this like I put the seed ungerminated in, seed in yeah, soil. In soil. No, 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 no. I germinated it in moss, oh, moved okay. it to soil once it had like one or two leaves. Um I would say 
not just like my aeroid mix. I would, I would do like at least 40% tree fern in that. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> and I forgot to mention, mm? not tree fern. <laughs> Without tree fern, it's unavailable where I live. Sorry. Oh. That was kind of an important part. <laughs> Yeah. Um, try soil, chopped up sphagnum moss, moss and perlite. a little bit of perlite. Yeah. I think that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can add some worm castings in there. But I love the chopped up moss. Something like this. Yeah, it like looks this. like it went through a food process. I know. Like, I can literally, like, it's like all shredded up. Sorry, I just made a mess. Yeah, because seedlings do like it a little bit more wet. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't do, like, huge chunks of like bark or like no um i just it's just too much space more dense if possible you can actually even do like straight soil i feel like without I mean, any I, amendments i'm pretty sure that's what growers do if you did straight mm -hmm. soil i mean seedlings do um appreciate more light too mm -hmm. light and like almost like swampy conditions mm -hmm. like they just like like the gross wet nasty substrate they love it the biggest mistake they you can do, it. yeah. The biggest mistake you can do is like a very heavily chunky amended mix. Yeah, where like the chunks are as big as the plant. Yeah. Say goodbye to that seedling. She's toast. Yeah. Oh hey, they're doing trash. Yay! Well, I hope they do um cardboard. cardboard. <laughs> I was like, what's that ruckus? Although I, I would. Pref I'm okay with hanging onto cardboard, not trash. Yeah. Very true. Q34. J3. J3. We should go to like a bingo night. Do you like bingo? You don't Can't. like bingo. You didn't answer quick enough. It's so I don't fun. think the game bingo is that fun. Have you played it with multiple boards where you're like standing and you have like your bingo stamp and you're like, tuk, 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 tuk. no. You know what's also so fun? So fun. What? Bowling. Like bowling, I'm just very bad at it. I need, Me, I'm so bad at it. I need the, I'm always I need the, the bottom bumpers. of the. Me too. Yeah. I'm like, I hit two of them. <laughs> Take that, suckers. So it is 2:30 now, and we still have like six like, bins to do. So many plants to do. Um, I am doubtful if we can get it done, but we have to stay positive. <laughs> But we have a good rhythm now, I think. Yeah, we were slow moving at first. It took, okay, like for real, it took like 20 minutes to pot two plants when we first started. I don't know why. No, because we kept messing up. I kept messing up tree from fiber. Soil. The number. Where did this plant come from? <laughs> yeah, it was chaos. Um, okay, next. Oh, let me show you this plant really quick. This is... An Ethereum um, dr Draconopterum. That's how I say it. She says Drake. Dra 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 Draconopterum. Don't look at me. It's got cute little elephant ears. I'm just really loving these these elephant ear plants lately. Oh, question. Shit. You need your phone? No, oh, I need ADHD medication. Oh. Squirrel! <laughs> When will we see the infamous Amanda? I'm actually in doing <laughs> in person, very unlikely, but I'm actually working on right now a collab with her. She like answered a bunch of questions and sent me a bunch of videos and photos. I just need to wrap my head around actually getting that one edited. Edited edited. But she lives across the country. She lives us. in Chicago, right? Yeah, she's in Chicago. So she's like basically on the other side of the world. Um, 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 but she did say she wants to visit. I know. I don't I, think she just says stuff willy nilly. I also think we should just go to Chicago and crash out. I've her never house. been to Chicago. I haven't either. It seems fun though. Yeah. I mean, I really. I've been to the States in so long. Yeah. I don't know how many years. I know. Well, oh, since you. before COVID. Jeez. Um, what was the last book each of you have read? Alice, I like those questions. Alice doesn't read. <laughs> she reads a lot online about plants. Like that's why she's so knowledgeable. Um, I guess I can answer it. So the last book that I read was uh, Verity, and I really, really enjoyed that one. 
Um, and then right now I am reading Modern Lovers from Emma Straub. Emma Straub. Uh, and then my next book is going to be Where the Crawdads Sing. I think that's what it's called. I think her the author is uh, Delia Owens. I wanted to read that one first before I watched the movie. I heard the book is like amazing. So I don't want to spoil it by watching the movie first. And then that will be my last book that I read until I move into the spooky books for the fall. And I'll try and share a little list in the description. I did like a Instagram question box of like spooky, mystery, true crime books to read. And I got a pretty hefty list. So I will share that. But yeah, Alice says it right. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last book I read would have been like a reread, like for the fifth time, one of the Harry Potter books. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. You're such a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> but I accept Harry Potter is incredible. Top three Ethereum wish list plants right now. Okay, so we already did one. We did one. Did two more. Uh, I'm going to keep saying this. The Hoth Red Sinus. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. And then... What's another Ethereum that I really want? I still want a Red Vein Dark Phoenix. Oh, okay, yeah. And then a red vein dark phoenix. Oh, no. I think maybe a pure black velvet eastern time. Okay. You've got, you got high-end taste. <laughs> well, it's on a wish list. It's not in my position. <laughs> yeah, true. But honestly, like, Carla, as soon as I have, like, a really good stretch of time work-wise, I'm going to be hitting Juana. Oh, Juan. oh Juan. Ready for one of your Carlos. Even though you don't watch my videos. Oh, Juan. <laughs> he does watch some of the videos. I don't know if he watches everyone. But he does. No, mine. Not oh, yours. I'm sure he watches yours. I don't. Yes, you are. Oh. You know how sometimes people do a trumpet noise when they blow their nose? And you can't help it, like it just the trumpet noise always comes out. I always wish that she would do a trumpet noise, but she doesn't. There's like her light dust flying around the, sh the warehouse right now. Next plant, I am repartying. Re <laughs> <laughs> um, Anthurium angomarcanum. A little cutie. It's hard because I don't have product showcase on, so it's gonna probably not focus, but. You guess it, Oh my god, this root system is teeny tiny and not good. I think this is the first plant that didn't That's probably have why it was like so droopy. Yeah. It I looks it way looks, better yeah, now. Yeah, it looks Holy okay crap, now. Holy crap, compared to yesterday. It looked like spinach yesterday. Spinach. Yeah, this one needs a little teeny tiny pot. Okay, so next question. Um, if you could visit any city together, which would it be? Together? Paris, the city of love. Paris. <laughs> Paris. Paris. Oui. Just kidding. Um, I, I actually have no desire to go to Paris. Really? Yeah. I think I when I went to Paris, I really loved it. But I had just have a different outlook to big cities now. Because mm. the last time I was in London, I just don't enjoy the city of London. I think it's more so the crowds for you, not really like the city itself, right? Yeah, and like just being surrounded by tourists is not fun, yeah. even though I am a tourist, but I don't want other tourists to be there. Yeah. Well, that's how I feel about like, because I got married in White Rock, and I fell in love with White Rock, but I was like, I can't live here because there's just... There's nobody here? No, there's tourists constantly. Oh, there's yeah. There's so many yeah. tourists there. Yeah, like I... I couldn't live in like a beach town because like in the summertime, like if people are taking up my parking spots, I would be so I would be angry. Living. Yeah, but White Rock is really cute. Like if you're not familiar with um, BC or like just like the Vancouver, lower mainland, whatever this area, there's a little city at the edge of the country, <laughs> very close to America, the border of America. It's called White Rock and it really is like a little beach town. It's right it's on quite, the water. I mean, it's a part of the city of Surrey. Yeah, but it, it kind of feels like its own little Yeah, it's kind of big. Yeah, 
and I got married there and I was like, and this was before I lived here, like I didn't know really anything about the city and I was like, I want to live here so bad and then I Very saw it expensive. during the day, super expensive. It's beautiful there. They've got like the nice big hills, like you can overlook the water, like it's really beautiful. You have to have money though to live there. Yeah. But then the next day when we were walking around the, the little town, I was like, why are there so many tourists? So yeah, cross that off my list. Um, but Where do we go together? Probably somewhere in Brazil. Oh, just... <laughs> yeah, Ecuador. Probably. Makes S sense, right? Somewhere with plants. Yeah, because I was thinking, the first thing that came to mind was um, to go to the International Aeroid Society in oh, September yeah. one year. Florida. I would do it, but I'm... Is it weird that I'm a little scared to go to Florida right now? That's not weird. No not hate weird. to Floridians, but... Well, I'm kind of, like, scared to go to a lot of places in the States right now. I mean, same here, and I'm American. I'm like, oh, I'll just stay in Canada right now. It's a little... It's a little bananas over there. But yeah, I think somewhere tropical where we can admire plants. I don't really see us going anywhere like... I don't know. Like where you just like sit on a beach all day and do nothing. Mm. I think Alice would go crazy for some reason. I was just talking about this yesterday with my boyfriend. Like, um, like the, the thought of going on a holiday where all you do, you're only there for like the temperature and the proximity to water and everything else is just like, it doesn't matter. You just go there, you lay down and, that's it. and you sun yourself and you eat and you drink. Um, <laughs> and then he was like, it probably is just pure relaxation, so there is like something to it, but I yeah. don't ever think of doing that kind of a holiday. Same here. I, I, I think I could do like one or two days of that, but I think I'd get tired of it. Like yeah. I want to do something, um, whether it's like exploring or shopping or mm -hmm. eating through the city. Um, Alice doesn't hike, but like hiking if there's like good hikes. But like the idea of doing like a seven day stay at a resort where you just sit on the beach, it, it has zero appeal to me. Yeah. I think I'd I think a couple crazy. of days would be quite nice though, because yeah. like, it, it, when you're doing it, it's quite enjoyable. Yeah, it's fun, but not for like a week straight. At least True. like if you go on a cruise or something, like there's activities and you can do stuff. Yeah, I actually quite like cruises, just because like a lot of the stuff is already, um, just it's just there for you that, yeah um i like the idea of a cruise but i'm too afraid of open waters yeah it freaks me out and it is pretty sterile of an experience but it is kind of nice to just have everything taken care of I mean, yeah like, i'm gonna go here and then i'm gonna eat food it's I mean, always there for you it's good for people like me who is just not good at planning i'm mm. not a planner and that's right the reason yeah why and when you go on like the things like at your ports that you want to stop at yeah you just pick what you want to do off a menu ah, you know yeah that's definitely more for me vince is not a planner either so that's why we don't go anywhere because none of us wants to plan anything mm -hmm. and i feel like um some of the things like depending on where you go obviously and like who you're cruising with but like um things that you would never even like well not never but it would be hard to figure out how to do it like mm -hmm horseback riding on the beach or like swimming oh. with stingrays you know yeah yeah that that's... would be difficult to do but then with like a cruise line and all their connections and stuff with the islands it's a lot easier yeah i i wish i could do that just without the cruise <laughs> yeah i mean i guess you can go through like a you know a booking agency to do it all but then i don't know Mm. You have to pay the fees. It's like way more expensive than your trip would have cost if you just planned it yourself. Yeah. I think, um, let me think of where we would both enjoy it. It's not anything to do with plants. Oh. oh. Japan. I was gonna say Taiwan. Oh. Shopping. Yeah, t uh, shopping. In, oh, Taiwan is very, very cheap. Yeah, and I, we love the little trinkets. Yeah. I just but love Japan. a good trinket. Oh I know. Yeah, I would say either of those places I could probably stay there for more than a week mm. just to like shop and eat yeah no I, I want you to experience a Taiwanese night market oh, that sounds so fun I want to like 
go somewhere like Vietnam where you can just like go outside your hotel and get a bowl of pho on the street. Yeah, street food. Uh huh. Oh, good. Korea would be fun. I would go to Korea. I just don't like long flights. Kind of freaks me out. Again, the concept of open water. <laughs> I know it's it's a like fear. The 13 to 14 hours on an airplane in economy is like so painful. This the way that they design airplanes these days, it's inhumane. For the poor people. If you're not rich. Yeah, maybe. but it's like I feel like I completely fill up the the seat. So anyone like taller, wider than me is definitely taking up space like outside of their seat, which is like that's crazy. Yeah. What kind of people are designing these airplanes and how are they allowed to get away with it? It's like how many people pack onto one flight and make the most money? Yeah. Yeah, it is pretty inhumane. I'm pretty sure I would have a great time flying 14 hours in first class or something. Yeah. But I go crazy even with like a two hour flight economy. I'm like, get me out of here. Even 10 years ago, it was so different flying in the economy. And now it's just like unbearable. Mm -hmm. Did you see, I don't know if it was like a spoof or whatever, it wasn't real, but the, someone designed like this new airplane seat oh, where yeah. it's like on top of you. On top. Yeah. And all you see is just seat in front of you. And um, they're just farting directly on yeah, top. Yeah, what the hell is that about, man? Yes. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Bless you. It's like per light. All in my nose. Okay, is it just me or are thrips and spider mites really bad this year? Send help or recommend products, please. This is, we had like five. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh. It looks like a little tiny squid, octopus squid. You can barely see it. Can you? It's so tiny. <laughs> Oh, it's so cute. It does look like a baby octopus. Did you close that door? No, you might have when you went oh, to yeah. the bag. Right? Okay. Sure. What were you just saying before I saw that leaf? Oh, um, I read the next question. There's some spooky stuff going on over here. I should open that door. Yeah. Case. It's too mysterious. Um, so we got a few questions about thrips and spider mites. Oh, yeah. Um, so is it just me or the thrips slash spider mites really bad this year? Send help slash best products, please. I have not seen a single thrip this year. It's just been spider mites for me. My issue has been spider mites too. My issue is usually thrips and my thrips, I had thrips. Mm on several plants. I doctor doomed them, they went away, haven't seen one since, but the spider mites, they're just like indestructible. I've had thrips like maybe twice. In your life. One was like, <laughs> in my life, yeah. And um, one, one time I came in on an import and um, Spino, Spinosad worked perfectly. Oh yes, I've been using Spino too, or I used Spino when I had thrips. As for spider mites, we don't know. Don't ask me still about spider mites. Still looking for the perfect solution because they're unstoppable. I actually, so I use um, the combination of the tea tree and peppermint soap, and then also um, uh, alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, on a plant after I got back from California, mm -hmm. and it hasn't come back on it on my McDowell. Oh. And that was the one that like had really, really bad spider mites. Oh. And I would have expected the spider mites to come back, um, but they didn't. And I got this from a comment. Someone actually said to mix um, basically, not equal parts, but do the peppermint, the tea tree uh, soap plus alcohol and a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. I didn't do hydrogen peroxide. I just did the soap and then the, the alcohol and I've just been using it as a spray. And it actually kind of seems to be doing something. Yeah. And it smells good. I would imagine if you had the means to like unpot all your plants and just like submerge them all mm -hmm. in soapy water. Yeah. Then that would probably do the trick. And while all the plants are gone, you can like um, disinfect and wipe down all the shelving and like the walls around where they were growing. I yeah. feel like that could do the trick. I remember um, one time there was a, a bin of plants here in the shop and I was 
propagating them because they had kind of gone a little bit too crazy. Um, these were put out on the flat hands. And then like Lauren was like, I'll just chop them all up and like just throw them in a bin. And I was like, well, I think we can treat them for spider mites. So I just like unpotted everything and then put them in a bin of soapy water and then closed the bin and we just left it in there for 24 hours. Came back, we potted them up and then the spider mites didn't come back. Oh. And it was just soap. So Oh, regular soap? Yeah, uh, I think she had, which soap was it? One of, I don't know, one of the hand I, soaps or something that was oh in the gosh. bathroom, yeah. It wasn't anything crazy. I don't even think she had dish soap, but I, I think I wanted something gentler than dish soap anyways. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping that this concoction works with the spray because I like the idea of doing that mixture over like, like a Dr. Doom spray where like you're inhaling it. I feel a little bit better about inhaling the two soaps plus a tiny bit of alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, don't ask me about spider mites because right now I'm just, I'm still trying to understand them. But I agree, they are really bad this year. It is bad this year. I mean, in general, like the pest thing is pretty bad in Vancouver, I'd say, or like where we live, but they are extra annoying this year. Okay, but I also have something to say about why they might be so bad. Because uh -huh. I cannot tell you, like, Every single day, and this might be just our local group, but everyone's asking for bonide in. granules for spider mites. And Why? then I'm, I, I feel like I'm fighting a losing battle because I'm trying to tell people that that's going to multiply your spider mites like crazy. And I think it's actually the metacloprid that people keep using to battle thrips or as use as preventative for thrips mm -hmm. that's causing the sp spider mites to just breed out of control. So I actually think like, Growers are contributing to the problem. I will link the the study. Is it a study? There's like so many. You just Google immunocloprid spider mites, and then like so many like um, like academic journal articles will pop up. So why why we're not talking about that more? I don't understand. You need to do a dedicated video on it, even if it's like 10 minutes long. Yeah, use that I'm as here my to channel, tell you. channel um, trailer. <laughs> yeah. Stop using bonide granules for spider mites. I stopped using bonide granules because I was like, you know what? I'm not even worried about thrips at this point. I Yeah, I could care less about thrips. Yeah, because we were only using that for thrips. I never used bonide for spider mites, mm -hmm. ever. And now that like I have sprays that I really trust, I'm like, uh-uh, I ain't messing around, dude. I just never thought we'd be dealing with a pest this like annoying. This annoying and for this long. I know. With no success. Yep. And I get okay, I don't know how much to believe, and this is no shade to any specific person, but I get comments pretty regularly of people saying that like spider mites was the easiest thing for them to eradicate, just like a quick wash down or just they, they just swiped it down and it was gone. How? I don't know, but I envy you. No, truly. If that is truly, truly, truly true, I do envy you because, man, I do some, like, really invasive treatments, and they still find a way to come back. They were so persistent on my, uh, my, uh, 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 uh what's that? <laughs> that spiky, Dicaria madagariensis. Oh. What are they even eating? Sticks? Yeah. And I soaked the whole thing. Alcohol. Nope, they didn't care. They did not care one bit. But another thing that, um, another pest that people find really easy is mealybugs. No. And I, they don't really do that much damage, but I can't really like, fully get rid of them. They're yucky. I'm surprised I got rid of my mealybugs, but I also got rid of a lot of plants inadvertently through <laughs> nuking them, apparently. Oh, yeah. Apparently. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I got rid of my mealy bugs. I, I still find spider mites to be the more difficult one. But I also think that you had more mealy bugs than me because of your compacta. Yeah. Like to begin with. Yeah. And like I have, I think more, or at one point I had more hoyas and succulents out in the open. Oh yeah. And yours were like they were contained always, or? Yeah. Always in a shell or in a cabinet or something. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you know how the back of this regulosum is like spiky? It's like fuzzy? Mm -hmm. All of the... Oh, the polyfill. 
I was just for, oh yeah, we had to check off some. Uh oh. All these stick tick 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 stick a tick 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 Thoughts on Equigenera's Anthurium hybrids? Sorry, I just take my socks off. It's hot. Um, I have some thoughts. Thought girl, I don't like what they're naming their hybrids because I don't think, like, for example, I think was it Crystal Lux is what Raven's Heart? Yeah, it's confusing me. But. It's not like all Raven's hearts are that one specific, uh, clones of that one specific plant. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's that entire batch or any Crystal Lux they're calling Raven's heart, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it seems like because they all look quite different. Yeah. So I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like it. No, don't like it. Um, I also don't, they have some hybrids that are just very uh, anticlimactic, I guess, or they're underwhelming. Yeah. They're not super special, but sometimes they have a price tag that is like insane just because it's like this hybrid. Um, but I'm not really, to be honest, I'm not really scoping out Equigenera's plants these days. No. And we haven't really imported or bought anything from them in a while. Yeah. I'm not opposed to it, but we just don't have all that money to be spending on mm -hmm. buying plants. Exactly. And I feel like their prices have been fluctuating so much. They'll have like a plant available that's like $600 and then like the next month it's like $40. Yeah. Like, why? Yeah. So I'm also scared of like paying too much for something that's just going to drop. Um, but no hate to them. I mean, we import from them or we have imported from them a lot of our plants are from equigenera but in terms of anthurian hybrids there's none that i specifically have my eye on that are from them yeah and then i also don't um i don't trust that if i order one under that name it's going to look like the one that i wanted in the first place yeah. because they're they don't seem to be just cloning one type of plant so yeah it's gonna be pretty I variable. I don't understand the whole naming thing. Like one day they just started to name every plant. Yeah. I'm like, wait a it, second. Is that necessary? Wait a second. That's the that question one? we'll answer. What is the so this is the last question we'll answer and it's what is the I'm gonna say aeroid that okay. started it for you. Like when you like just took a nosedive and were like, This is gonna be my life now. What was your gateway <laughs> plant? Um I think I have like two. Yes, I have two. Okay. One dream. Huh? Your me dream. Oh no, <laughs> not that one. Um, Philodendron melanocrysum. Oh yeah. You know, had yeah. its peak moment in 2020. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got one, and then I was just like, I I, I felt more emotions then than I ever did for any plant. Yeah. And then um, I think the other one that really started it for anthuriums for me, I don't even have this plant anymore. Um, it was the first anthurium I'd ever owned was like a crystal hope, but it was massive. The oh. leaf was like this big, but it was like a crystal hope kind of hybrid because it had like square petioles. It had some like magnificum in it, but it had that like bleedy, super silver veining. Oh, um, I, I bought that from Lauren actually. I remember Before we even knew each other. Is that the one? Beautiful. Is that the one that you were like, oh, I'll see if I can cut it? Yes. And then and you we, like asked JR. And, oh. and then he was like, you have to cut it. And I was like, what? Yeah. And then, huh? I was like, okay, guess we're not cutting we're it. We're not cutting it. <laughs> um, and yeah, you don't have that plant anymore. I knew. But I think Milano was like one of the first ones that really like made me Giddy. oh in trouble. Yeah. Big, big trouble. Yeah. Um, mine was also the Milano, and that is because it's one of the first imported plants that I owned. And I was like, this is unlike any other plant I've ever had before. Mm -hmm. Like, it is so cool. Um, and then also, probably, hmm, it's one of my other first, early first plants. Um, Maybe 
maybe the queen actually because I imported mm. one I imported one from Equigenera in 2019 and I was like yep my life's over that's it this is it for me it was nice knowing you I just couldn't get over like the texture of it and just like how different it was from any plant that I've owned because up until that point I had only owned like the plants that you can get at the you know nurseries and none of them had a texture like the queen or the milano and yeah i just yeah and it was like the one of the first times you ever feel a feeling of like just pure exhilaration for obtaining a plant a yeah. wishless plant mm -hmm. which you don't you don't feel that kind of feeling it's, it's when you're just now. like yeah like garden center shopping and buying mm -hmm. plants that you see often yeah all right, so I think that's it for all the questions. We have hella plants to pot. So yeah, we got a, we got a, yeah, we got a haul ass, but thank you guys for sticking around for this super long q and I think this is gonna be like a two hour, no, not two hour. It's probably gonna be like an hour and a half of Q&A. That's good. Yeah, pretty good. Um, Get those minutes. Yeah, I will film tomorrow for a week of, if not the next day, I might be dead tired tomorrow night. I have a lot of editing to do. Um, thank you, Alice, for joining in on this Q&A. Uh, thank you guys for the questions. <laughs> by the time this video goes up, the live sale will have already ended, unfortunately. But she usually has some leftovers, and they go up on the website. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything here that you saw that you liked, um, make sure to check North Shore Tropicals in the next maybe week after this goes up. And that's it. So uh, see you tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, step one of filming is making sure we get Pudge's energy out first when Alice first <laughs> arrives because he is insane. Are you being calm today, I'm buddy? Calm. Oh my god, your toy is so dirty. Don't I get know. it on Auntie's face. I, know. <laughs> I didn't I didn't wash it after um the boys what? came over oh. that one day. Are you gonna be a good boy today? So Tell Auntie you had a watermelon. You had a watermelon? He had a watermelon and he ate it with his front teeth. Did you give it to him like as a slice? Yep. And went. Yep. Chip, chip, chip. No, he uses oh. his front teeth. So, like, here? Yeah, like right in front of it. Okay. Like, right here. Yeah. Like, right in front of it. Okay. Yeah. Right in front of it. Yeah. Like, right in front of it. Yeah. Like, right in the face. Oh, punch down. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Off. Down. Careful, punch. Don't go on your feet. Where's he? Wow, man, look at you, you're so big. Whoa, that's cute. That's cool. I don't know if it's gonna bother me. What? It's just like not centered. Because there's like more white on this side. Do you wanna move it over this way or do you wanna move the couch that way? Because I feel like the couch is not centered to the shelf. Yeah. It looks like a lot of white. Yeah. Then I'm gonna be closer to the. Do you want to move the couch? Okay. This tiny And then. this video watch our video and I will link it in the description <laughs> I'm on the floor because I am too lazy to get set up with my table my full table and everything but Alice just left we had a full day of filming so I am zonked but there is one thing I wanted to do today and that is handle this rehab elbow behind me um, a bit of sad news and a little bit of an update this is the only plant that didn't do well in all of the plants that I repotted for Nick. Um, and that was the Albo, and I, that was the one that I was kind of the most proud of and the one I felt sort of the most confident with. So I was kind of surprised that it tanked, but he was saying that it was kind of struggling for a little bit. 
and he wasn't sure why so he wasn't all that surprised when it started to it started to go downhill sorry i'm just i have his moss pole here that i'm just trying to get redone i don't know if i'm gonna need one or two moss poles i feel like i can get away with one for now and then maybe do a second one after like this is a little this is a little much Sorry, give me a second here. I just turned the camera on and I wasn't even sure if I was ready yet. Oh, this is really long, that's what she said. Okay, maybe we don't need that. <sighs> Sorry, just trying to catch my breath. I literally just got back upstairs and since I'm all dressed and have my face on, I figured I might as well just film since I didn't film yesterday. Um, and I wanted to drop this off at his apartment this weekend because I need to reclaim some space in my um, in my tent here, really kind of a lot. Um, so I've got one of Lauren's clear moss poles. I've got moss in it, and I'm hoping that now that it's rerooted, we can get some um, I don't know some sense of uh, permanency <laughs> in its pants because. It's just been rehabbing in water with a bubbler. And I, this was the first time that I struggled with rooting an elbow in a long time. Like I've actually found after a while that I just really got the hang of like propagating and rehabbing elbows. And this one just gave me so much grief and I don't know why. So anywho, um, let me show you what it looks like. It's very sad. So even before I repotted it, he was having trouble with like keeping the whites on the leaves. And so I am going to give him a bit of my silica, my TPS silica, and just hope that it helps maintain some of this white. There's a lot of white on this new leaf, but it kind of seems like it's rehabbing now. Um, it fully like rerooted in water, like a hot, hot dam. So I'm going to be doing a really perlite heavy pond mix i think i don't know why it just feels right to me um but i'm gonna put my mask on because all of this needs to be sifted so sorry if i'm a bit muffled but if i don't mask up i'm gonna have perlite up my nose perlite dust up my nose for like a week and i'm just using ugh, I'm using some Party Pond from Ina, which I will link in the description. And then I'm mixing some of this finer, it says coarse, but it's a little bit finer than the perlite that I have been using. And I'm just gonna quickly just kind of sift through this. I hate preparing pawn. Okay, I don't want this out of water too long because these water roots will dry up so fast, but I do want to clean this vessel out first before I do anything. Stick. So anyways, you guys, obviously it's Friday and filmed all day with Alice, very, very tired, but I still try, like, even though I'm, you know, self-employed, I still try and keep a sense of, like, normalcy in, like, schedule because I found that when I work every single day, which I still do, I don't really have, you know, I feel like I don't really have anything to look forward to unless I have specific plans, which doesn't happen very often. 
And so now what I've kind of made a promise to for myself is that at least one day, whether it be, it's never a Sunday, but like a Friday or a Saturday, I will take it a little bit easier, meaning won't be working all day, will do things that I want to do, like clean. I know that's not really relaxing, but I, very, I enjoy cleaning. Um, so I'll clean or I'll sleep in a little bit longer in the morning and then read a book or something. Just kind of take it easy. And that is going to be my day. Well, unfortunately, I'm not really going to have a day like that this week because I'm on a tight deadline with some um, sponsored posts. But am I going to be able to fit this pole in here? I wasn't planning on putting it like in. I was going to try and just like sort of sit it at the top here. Oh God. Okay. Um, but tonight, right after I'm done filming this, I'm going to get into my PJs. I'm going to put on a scary movie and fold laundry. It's like one of my favorite things to do. A lot of people don't like folding laundry, but for me, I take folding laundry as an opportunity to like catch up on TV shows or watch a movie or something. And it's my, not really excuse, but kind of, it's my excuse to just kind of sit down and watch something. And since I'm very like, I have a hard time uh, keeping my focus on one thing. Like usually if I'm watching a movie, I'll just like be on my phone or something. Um, this way I can actually like pay attention to the movie and be still doing something folding. And it's like the perfect combo for me. Um, and it's just the vibes. So I really, really enjoy laundry days when I can just fold. I don't like actually physically doing laundry. I don't like putting away laundry, but I love folding. I could fold all day long. So that's what tonight's gonna be. And hopefully get some, get some rest because I didn't really sleep well last night. Fingers crossed this thing roots because I don't want to rehab this again. I really don't. If it was like a small plant, fine, but this thing is so big. Anyway, I feel like, I mean, I haven't really gone over the footage for this week's week of, um, but I feel like with that super long Q&A that Alice and I did, I feel like I don't really have to film too much for the rest of this week because I'm aiming for three hours long. Um, but there are a few things I want to do here and there. Um, I do want to kind of show you guys the plant room, sort of like the updates that I made to it. There's not a ton of updates. It really is very minor, mostly just the shelf, um, which you would have seen in my... Crap, which video did I show it? Oh, the one that's... Oh. <laughs> hasn't gone up yet in my timeline but look for a video called um re two two hours of repot and chat talking about the things that people don't like me for online <laughs> hopefully that one is received well i'm a little bit nervous but yeah i kind of showed you what the new shelf looks like everything is just growing so fast and obviously like i would rather have that problem than like have plants be dying but it is no joke when you are um, growing these plants and they're actually doing well. It's like, where the heck do they go, you know? And I'm trying, like there are certain plants that I really am trying to see how large I can grow it. So to me, cutting it back seems a little bit counterproductive. So I'm trying to not chop them. Whereas before, as soon as a plant got to a size where it stressed me out, I was so quick to just chop and now I'm trying my best to not chop, and it's very difficult. I don't know. Maybe if we shove like a pole in. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, this one is really long though. Oh my lanta. So what I'm gonna do is take my old shears and I'm gonna use it to cut the bamboo stake at an angle so it's easier to go in. You want to do it in one swift motion or else the whole thing will crack. Ah. But when you do it very, very fast, oh, it doesn't want to focus. When you do it fast, it doesn't crack. I'm just going to use this to stabilize the pole. And now I feel like that's good. And then I'll chop this top off. Okay. 
And now I guess I can continue to fill just a little. I don't want it to be too heavy. All right, what I'm also gonna be using for this is something called Hugo's Amazing Tape. I did show it in a few videos now. Um, I'll link it in the description so you can kind of see what it's about, but I'm gonna essentially be using that as straps for this because I don't want these aerial roots that have been rooting in like high humidity in my tent. I don't want them to dry out because I want them to root into this pole. So I don't think you need to be honest anymore. You can use grafting tape, but in my opinion, grafting tape isn't as pretty as Hugo's, but you can get a lot for a good price compared to Hugo's, Hugo's tape. I think this tape was on like Shark Tank, one of those shows. And I'm just like, by the way, this is the one inch thickness. I recommend this thickness. I think the half inch is just too, it's too small. Oh, shite. I basically just want to make sure that all of these roots that have grown along this stem are enclosed in this tape or else it's just gonna dry out into nothing. And, oh, I forgot to move the moss down. There's like all these gaps. Sorry. My brain is so fried from filming today, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. All of this is covered now, all of up here, and hopefully that's enough to keep things nice and hydrated in there. And I'm just gonna do a few more pieces along the stem where I can see some good like root action happening because if I can have more insurance along the stem, that's gonna make me feel a lot better if this thing rots again, which I would not be, honestly, I would not be surprised if it did. But if it does, I'm going to advise Nick to just grow it in water, honestly. If he's not pressed about having it like growing in a substrate, I would say just cut your losses and grow in water. She is potted. She's done. Um, she's inoculated. And what I'm going to do is actually just bring this to the shower and I'm going to spray down the moss pole again. And hopefully that's enough to keep the roots nice and hydrated because I'm a little bit afraid that they're all going to dry up before they can kind of get established in the pole. But I'm not going to lie, I don't want to see this plant again. <laughs> I hope that this is it. I hope that it roots. I hope it's happy. It's not as perlite heavy as I would have wanted, but if I had more perlite to spare, I would have added some, but I have so many repots to do next week um, that it's, I just can't. I kinda wanna cut off all the brown parts. Let's do that because I don't wanna see them. Anyway, tomorrow is, what, Saturday? Video's going up. Might do. I was thinking of doing a premiere, but I feel like it's a little bit intense to do a two hour long premiere and be chatting for two hours. It seems extensive or extensive. It seems uh, excessive, a little excessive. By the way, Alice and I, um, Alice and I launched our Discord finally. If you don't know what Discord is, if you're an old person like me, um, it's essentially like a chat room, but like a community. And you join and there's like all these different topics that you can talk to people about and make friends. And so we're hoping, like our goal with the Discord was to have both of our followers and our communities kind of come together and make friends. Like that's really all we want is for you guys to make friends and have people to talk to. Um, just because we get it all the time when we're like, we're like, man, I, I wish we had like plant friends like you or like, where do you find plant friends? And I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but literally our followers, there are like people that I can imagine like in the comment section where I'm like, this person and this person would be such a good friend couple. And I just think if you guys got to know each other, you would like 
realize that there are more people than you think that have the same outlook as you. We're all kind of like-minded. And um, yeah, it's just, I'm just hoping that it becomes a really, really special place. And so I will link that in the description. I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know a lot about Discord. I'm like, I had to really pick my sister's brain who's Gen Z. Um, she was trying to like teach me all the things and she's like, God, you're so old. Like, how do you not understand this? But there's so many bells and whistles to Discord that I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. Honestly, I have no clue what I'm looking at. Um, so hopefully it goes well. I think by the time this video goes up, it will have already been around for maybe a week or two. So it'll still be pretty new, but come join, come hang out. There's gonna be things like different topics like no drainage and plant friends and pests and fertilizers where we can all kind of like come and ask for help, give advice. Um, and I don't know, I think it'll just be good because I do like the, uh, the premiere chats where you guys kind of connect, make friends and talk. But then once the chat ends, it like just goes away and it's so abrupt. So it'll be nice to have sort of a permanent place to go and I don't know, just talk to each other. So that's the goal. I was gonna launch the Discord on my own and have it be like an Unplanned Parenthood Discord, but I don't know, it just seems funner to do it with Alice. If I can do something with Alice, I'll do it. Any opportunity. Um, I just feel better about doing it with her. So then at least her subscribers and my subscribers can all come together and there's like a better chance of kind of growing it into a larger community, so yeah. Anyway, man, these leaves down here are just beat up and just torn to bits. I don't know if I should do silica right away since I just repotted it, but I think what I'll do is just, yeah, give Nick some silica and maybe in like a week or two or whatever, he can start using it on this plant. Um, and hopefully more of this white can continue because it's been browning for a good while. I think when it sort of outgrew the exo that it was in and the greenhouse it was in and was just living in room conditions, I think the lack of light or the lowering of the light really affected this plant a lot. And I worry about all the white, like this half moon, almost half moon leaf. I just feel like it's gonna go brown so quick. But right now my concern is just getting it established in this pot and hopefully all goes well. So let me just, um, I think I have time for it to do one more thing. I'm just going to get cleaned up here a little bit and then we'll move on to the last thing for today. Next two are much easier and a lot smaller. Can you see anything? No, you cannot. The next two are... I don't even remember what these are. I think one is a chicken farm. Okay, so there's three Hoyas basically that I wanna repot. One of them is this Hoya Clemenciorum that I'm going to be giving to my friend Anna next week. So I wanna get that potted. And then I think this is the chicken farm or Daiki, no, chicken farm. I don't even remember. I got this from Lauren. Very excited about this one because it's so crusty and nasty. And then the third one is another one from Lauren, which I'm so excited about because this was another wishlist Hoya. And that is a Hoya Nova Ghost. Apparently, these used to be really, really expensive back in the day and now they're like super cheap. But I've always really liked it. Um, I liked it because of how like thick and meaty <laughs> the leaves looked and they really are in person. And then a nice surprise was the fuzziness. Like the back is so, so fuzzy. And I just enjoy the variegation and the color of this, um, of this Hoya. So thank you, Lauren, for these. I am gonna get them potted up now because I don't want the water roots to get too long. And hopefully we can get some good growth on this. Sorry, I'm gonna be doing this kind of off camera because I'm gonna be spilling too lazy to get my smaller spoon. Um, I'm gonna do this one first. This one doesn't have a ton of roots, but enough to continue the rooting process in pond. And I gotta go a little higher actually. I'm gonna kind of sit it at an angle like this, like have it rested on the pot. 
Um, I also don't want to bury where this note is because that's where the new growth is going to come out of. I've made that mistake before. Don't want to do it again. Oh, and I'm going to be inoculating with TPS Billions. I think one thing I want to do this week is do a um, a spray of my, my Hoyas. So just a spray, a mixture of the tea tree soap, peppermint soap, and alcohol. Um, just in case I have any mealybugs or flat mites. I have not seen a pest on any of my Hoyas since, honestly, since Hoya Apocalypse. But I'm trying to remember and remind myself to not get too comfy. Because when I get too comfy, that's when all hell breaks loose. Because then I'm just like, oh, the Hoyas have been fine for so long. I don't need to check on them. I don't need to do any prevention. And then soon enough, like the whole cabinet is just infested. So I would say that that's one thing I struggle with. Um, with taking care of plants is just like remembering to be preventative. I think I just, I tend to get really comfortable when things are good um, and then I'm just acting, you know, defensively when things get bad. So I'm trying to stay on top of my Hoyas because they're growing really well and I do not want to um, risk anything. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's what, I, I think I want to do that this week. Tomorrow, I definitely need to water. I heard my phone. Oh, uh, I need to water. I have plants here that are like bone dry, which is weird because I just did a watering three days ago and everything is already kind of dried out outside of my, my greenhouses. So that's got to happen tomorrow. No, it's non-negotiable. And then honestly, I don't really know what the rest of the week has in store for me in terms of plant chores for this video because I do have to film quite a few like separate videos this week and in doing that I'm going to be doing a lot of repotting, a lot of things that are on my to-do list which I normally would have done for a week of but because there are certain videos that need to go out um, I just I have to save it for for those videos and I guess you'll understand why later once they actually go up I wish that this pot was a little deeper but I think she'll be okay this one's so pretty the last one is this I hope that this is the form of Clemenciorum that Anna wanted because we're doing a trade she gave me or she's going to give me a uh, doc block She's gonna give me a Zara Michelle Anthurium. Oh, this is not big enough. Maybe new. And I had one before that I think I bought from Lauren as a seedling, and that one just hated everything. That one, uh, that one died swiftly. So now I'm getting a second chance at love, which is great because I really, really do love that Anthurium. It's becoming more common, the Zara Michelle, but I don't care. I love it. Still high on my wish list, and she had a few extra seedlings, so she gave one to Alice for her birthday, which was so nice, and then um, she offered to give me one just for nothing, um, but I said that I would trade her, so she wanted a Clem, so it kind of worked out perfectly. And then hopefully when my other Clem grows out a little bit more, I can give her a cutting of that one too because they're both very, very different. And if you want to see what my other Clem looks like, the new leaf is just perfection. I posted a picture of it on my Instagram and I also featured it in my collab video with Alice, which is actually going to go up after this. So you'll have to check my Instagram. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for me today. I'm not even going to bother cleaning up because tomorrow I'm doing a massive repot for another video. But I'm going to go. I'm tired. What time is it? Tired and hungry. It's almost 6 p.m. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow. Hello, guys. Happy Saturday. Sorry, this is filled with water and it's super heavy. So, um, it. I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> it's Saturday night. Well, evening-ish. Uh, it's about 6 p.m. Vince is out mini golfing and my favorite thing to do when I'm home alone, especially on a weekend, is to water my plants out here and watch a scary movie. I don't know why. It's a combination that just makes me so happy. Um, and 
I'm gonna seize the opportunity and do that now. I have been editing all day, like seriously from maybe um, 8 a.m. No, I lied. 9 a.m. until 5, I was editing or just behind the computer doing stuff and my brain feels fried. So I just wanna hang out with my plants. I don't really wanna to talk too much in front of the camera. I know that some of you guys have voiced that you don't really love the time lapse and I hear ya. So I'm not going to be um, putting in too many into the week ofs anymore, um, but I do want to kind of show you what my watering routine is going to look like tonight. So I'm doing two things. One, I am finally using silica gold out on my plants on my living room shelf. If you don't know what silica is for, it's essentially strength for plants. So I'm just going to read it to you. It says that. It's a silicon and potassium supplement for plants designed for use in indoor and outdoor growing environments. It's 100% water soluble and provides immediate silicon for plant uptake. Silicon is known to strengthen stems and increase plant resilience. The other element, potassium, is critical in regulating water flow in and out of plants from the roots to the canopy. It also uh, apparently strengthens cell walls of the plants and that's why a lot of people have been using it on their variegated plants. I have nothing to say about it yet. I am going to be running an experiment with my Albo, with my Albo Epi, which is what I bought this for. Um, but I just figure why not use it on my plants out here. None of my plants in my plant room seem to have a reaction to it two weeks ago. So now I'm feeling comfortable to use it out here. So I have, I don't even know how much um, water this is, to be honest. The the dilution, it says uh, once a week add five to 10 mill milliliters per gallon of feed water. But I am going to probably use, I, I wanna say that this is, if I had to estimate, maybe like a gallon and a half or two gallons of water in here right now. I always just think of like a milk jug. Um, I'm almost certain I could fill at least one and a half milk jugs with the water in here. So I tend to go a little bit lesser on whatever the amount says to do. So I think I am going to add about five milliliters to this thing of water. So this is actually a five mil, um, I always forget the name of these things. <laughs> what is it called? Uh, can't remember. Anyway, this holds five mil. So I'm going to do three mil because I, I don't know how to like squeeze it in all the way. Well, I guess I can go like this. Wait. Okay, that didn't work. Oh, it did. Look, it's full. Okay, so I'm just going to add all of this. Hey, what's wrong? It's okay. Um, and then I'm going to mix this up. Wherever my spoon is. I probably could add a bit more, but I'm going to err on the side of caution for now since I don't know much about it. Um, and then the second thing that I'm going to be doing at the same time of watering is essentially pest prevention slash pest treatment. So what I'm doing is I'm going to add a little bit of this tea tree and peppermint castile soap. Ugh, I got this from my mom. Sorry for the crazy exposure. And not a like specific measurement amount, but I'm kind of just like eyeballing it and following my heart. And oh, I need alcohol as well. I'm using 70% isopropyl alcohol. And again, I'm just kind of adding a dash, maybe a little more than that. And then I'm going to water down the rest with water obviously. For my living room plant specifically, um, I don't just spray it and then leave it. I typically will spray and then wipe down, but for my plants in my plant room or in an exo, a greenhouse, or if I'm bringing it to the like bathtub or the sink, I'll leave it on there to dry, but I don't want things sopping wet on my um, on my shelf. I just want to make sure everything gets wiped down and I figure doing this kind of combination is probably going to be a little bit better than just doing something like water. And I am trying to not use so many pesticides all the time or just like chemically stuff. 
Um, I don't know. I'm just, I, I feel like I've been using it so excessively this year because of how bad spider mites has been. Um, and I just don't really know what's do what that's doing to my lungs and whatever. So if I can go more of like the natural route, I think I would prefer to do that. So anyway, going to find a movie to watch. I'm gonna just kind of take you through this without talking and um, yeah, that's it.
guys. Happy Sunday. I have a little bit more energy today because I just finished wrapping a video that I filmed um, for Skillshare. Ow. And now I get to do something fun with you guys as a sort of continuation of that video, which is propagating corn. So here I have a cup of scalp from corms, which is so exciting. And then I have fried at corms, which is also so exciting. So I have seven fried at corms and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight scalp from corms. So all I really need to do is peel them back and get them into little cups for propagation. Typically, I would just, like if I were keeping these, I would just put them like all in the same cup and propagate them together. But I actually am planning on selling all of these. I don't care how good the variegation is on any of these. I know I'm gonna be tempted to keep it, but Pudge needs a tooth removed, so I need to make some money. <laughs> I actually think I'm gonna propagate these in um, stratum because it happens so fast, and then I can just sell it like that in stratum since I'm not really using it, so it just kind of makes the most sense to me. I think I should have enough. Hopefully this is all the stratum I have left. I think I'm gonna do the fried at corns first. By the way, I just chopped my spiritus for, I almost said Amanda, I wish. I wish Amanda lived here. Um, for Alice. So I just gotta clean these corns off real quick. What do you guys wanna chat about while I do this? I get tired of doing Q&As while I'm doing like repots because sometimes I feel like a broken record. But then if I don't talk about anything, I'm just like sitting here doing nothing. Well, sitting here and you guys are just watching me, which is boring. Boring, snoring. I need one more subscriber to hit 17,000. That's crazy cool. I guess I could talk about YouTube. Do you guys want to talk about YouTube? What the heck do you want to chat about? Anywho, my goal this year was to hit 20. And honestly, um, the reason that I want to hit 20 is because I think if I have 20,000 subscribers, I think I'll be like in a pretty comfy place financially, um, just to be like fully transparent with you guys. It's not like I'm going to like retire early and like buy a house. Like there's no way with what I'm making now on YouTube, like I can afford that much. But I think once I hit 20, if I ever hit 20, I feel like I'll just be more comfortable, you know, like I can more easily just be like, oh yeah, I need to buy that. Like, I'm just going to buy it. Not like, oh, I guess I have to like sell plants and like save up a little bit. Like I want to just, I don't know. I just... And of course, right now, like, I feel like I'm like hustling so hard because I'm trying to save for a down payment on a house. But then some, a part of me is just like, why? Why do I want to own something so bad? I feel like that's something that like the generation before us, like pounded into our heads. Like you're not successful unless you, you own property. But I think a huge reason for me is that I think you guys know this by now that I just take a lot of pride in my space and I'm home all the time and being home is like heaven to me. Like it's just my oasis and it's just where I feel the most comfortable. You know, when you're renting, you can only do so much. It, you're kind of at your, your landlord's mercy, like in terms of allowing you to do certain things. And even if you want to do certain things, it's like, is it even worth the money? Because then what if the next month they're like, sorry, we're selling, you're out, you know? Because there's all these things that I would love to do to this apartment, but like, it just wouldn't be worth it for me to invest to do that. But I think home ownership for me isn't so much like, oh, look, I bought land and I'm successful and I'm an adult. I just want a space where like, I can put a hole in a wall, like, not like a whole hole, but you know, like hang like a full crazy shelf installation without having to ask anyone's permission and not feel like worried that at any given notice, like I'll have to move out because the landlords want to move back in or they want to sell the place. I don't know. There's something about being a renter that feels really, 
It feels really temporary. Of course it is temporary, but meaning it, it kind of has me on edge a little bit. Like I always feel like I'm gonna have to move out like right away or something's gonna happen and I'm gonna lose it all. So I think just having a home just makes me feel a little bit more safe and secure in that I can just create this little oasis for us and know that if we were to ever leave, it was completely our decision, you know? So that's one, that's like really the only reason I want to own a home. It's not so that I can, you know, build my assets and build my equity and have something to give my kids later. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to have kids. Like, I'm not worried about that. I really am not. I just, <laughs> I just want to decorate it the way I want to decorate it and not need anyone's permission. And I just, I want like a front door that leads to the earth. I tell this to my friends all the time. I'm like, I just want a front door where I have ground. Like it's like the ground, the earth, you know? In the fall, I wanna like sweep the leaves off my front porch. And I wanna be able to just like open a door and have Pudge go potty without me having to like put my jeans on. It's like the little things like that. But of course, I'm super freaking grateful for the situation I'm in. Like, we're definitely living in a place that we could never ever afford and like to own. And we just got a really, really good deal rent wise because we're friends with the, the owner of this unit. So, uh, yeah, obviously I wanna count my blessings. I'm glad to even have a roof over my head, but you know, it's not bad to have goals and and wants in life, but I think something I have to like remind myself and something that my therapist always tells me is to like, just appreciate what you have. Appreciate what you have and remember the time where, you know, the things that you have now are things that you would have wanted before and now that you have it, now you want more. Humans always want more, more, more. God, I love, I love peeling corms. I love the the sound and the feeling when you like peel a corm and you get like one big like piece off and it kind of cracks. So good. Some of these are already like super peeled. Like there's no kind of husk over it. So I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna give these a quick rinse. We're gonna go for a bath. Go for a swim. And what I'm going to be potting it in are these nifty little, I think these are just like tiny little like coffee cups for a cafe, um, but they're perfect for corms. So what did I say I was propagating in? Oh yeah, stratum. So how many corms do we have? Seven? Okay. I wonder if I could mix this with something like perlite. Have you guys mixed perlite and stratum before? I think I'm gonna do it just because I don't think I'm gonna have enough for all my corns. So I've got a little parfait here, stratum and perlite. I'm just gonna give it a good mix. Is it? I don't think it's gonna mix you guys. This is why you should stay in school. Cause the stratum is obviously heavier than the perlite. So I don't think it's gonna mix. It's kind of like when you mix perlite and pond in water, like all the perlite just floats to the top. So well, this is kind of working. I mean, it's not like the most mixed, but it's mixed, mixed enough, I think. Why am I itchy? I don't know. Okay, seven. One. I don't know where I'm going to put all these props, but you know, two. I guess I could bring it to the shop. Three. I have to work tomorrow. Maybe for my scalpum corms, I'll root them in pawn since the fried eggs are a bit more expensive. Oh, why am I so itchy? Oh no. Is it the perlite? 
Would perlite dust make you itchy? I don't think so. Hold on, I need to wash my hands because I'm actually super itchy. I just saw that <laughs> Vince got a um got a parking ticket. It was on the front table. $57. Jeez Louise. Yeah, guys, I'm like actually having an allergic reaction to something. Um, I don't know if you guys can see. Oh, you can't see jack crap in this lighting. Oh, I think you can kind of see. Do you guys see right here? I'm like breaking out into like a rash. I'm getting really spotty. I didn't have anything for lunch and I've been filming for like two hours. If it was lunch, I feel like I would have had the reaction sooner. I could have just been touching perlite. Uh oh. Oh man, I'm really itchy. Maybe um, I'll just jump in the shower after this. I don't need like a super long... If you see something like this, more than likely it has been trying to travel up your vessel or up your pot. Um, so I'm just going to cut this off a little bit and bury it. Oh my lanta, I am itchy. Hopefully these guys root quickly for me because... I don't want to be sitting on all these props for like ages and ages. So these are two leaves that sprouted. Sorry, the ring light is way too bright. These are two leaves that sprouted under the substrate. So I'm just going to remove these because it's not necessary anymore. And it looks like a new leaf is coming out. These little green corms that look like cabbage is making me have cute aggression. I'm so sorry you guys can't really see what I'm doing. Oh no, I don't have any more substrate. Okay, let's think about this. How about half of them go into pond and the other half can go into stratum? Sure. Quick solution. Um, I'll put the big guys in this mix. I mentioned this in my gimmicky plant things video that I didn't really, um, or I thought that, I, okay, I don't think that stratum is gimmicky. I do think it's like kind of just hype, like kind of overhyped right now. Um, and I just wanted to make it a point to say that I love it for rooting alocasias or corms. And I think I mentioned that in that video that it just roots everything like a hot dam. But if I could like, if I had to give up one substrate to use in this hobby, like I could live without stratum, I really could. And one reason why I don't really, really, really love it, love it, is because of how quickly it dries out. Like it's just, it dries out so fast if it's not like in a greenhouse or if it's not in like a, a cloche or in a prop box or something. I love that, um, that sizzly sound. It just dries out really fast, and if your corn dries out in um, if your corn dries out in stratum, those delicate roots are done for. I wish I had stickers to put on these. I think I'll order some stickers actually, because when these are ready to sell and someone buys them, I want them to have a sticker on it. I'm not panicking. I'm not panicking. My whole arm is turning red. Oh no. What was I talking about? Oh, YouTube. Oh yeah, being comfy, man. My conversations with myself just like veer off track very, very fast. If you haven't been able to tell by now, but yeah. Um, my goal this year was to hit 20,000 just cause I, I feel like that would be good for me in terms of being a little bit more comfortable financially um but i don't think it's gonna happen just because like once i hit oh that's too much once i hit the uh 10k mark it was kind of like an uphill battle from there i kind of have that same experience with um that's not the corn I kind of had the same experience with Instagram. It was like, I feel like I hit 20K pretty fast and then anything else above 20K was like a hurdle. Like 
you know, because you've already kind of captured so many people and it's like, how many more people can you really... But then you look at other people in your same industry who have like half a million you're like, okay, maybe people just don't like me. It's fine. But truly, um, me wanting like a certain number isn't for like a, oh, look at me, I have this many followers. It's, again, to be transparent, it is a sort of a financial comfort thing. My goodness. But I'm almost at 17, which is like seriously insane. Like to see that number, it's wild. Where did my coffee go? I also haven't posted on my vlog channel in a hot minute, but something that I wanted to post on that channel were like my favorite, I wanted to do one video, it was like where my, my favorite thrifted things in my house, and then two are like, my favorite things around my house that like I can't live without. Things like sponges and you know, bed sheets, like just like little things here and there. I don't really want to do another vlog and I don't really want to do another cleaning video. So I've been wanting to do that, but it's just like, again, with my schedule in September, plus trying to get caught up or like ahead enough on YouTube so that I can take time away and be with the people that are coming to visit. It's like, I don't have a second to breathe. Six. I didn't even know I could do that. Um, in terms of other goals for YouTube, I think something that I want to do are create little... I had it in my mind when I was washing dishes to like do a... Mm, I have the word that I wanted to use. Oh, like a reference video. So like just doing quick like five minute videos on like this is how I'm, this is like my current soil mix and then do another video like this is my current Lego mix or like another video of um, that's it. <laughs> just like kind of like common questions that I get where you can just easily be referenced to a video of course that wouldn't count as like a Wednesday or Saturday upload. It would just be something that I can put on to YouTube so that I can put it in like a playlist or something for people to reference. That's something that I really want to do. By the way, I'm. this is just another thing to talk about, but I closed the, or I'm trying to close the bank account that I've had since I moved here. It's my business account for obviously my business. But I want to move to a credit union instead because like there are zero fees. There's one right down the street from me if I ever need to like deposit money or get money or something. It's just more convenient rather than having to drive across the bridge and go to my bank there. We have to pay for parking. And so I was trying to close the account online or over the phone and they were like, oh, sorry. I just heard it looks like we're missing some information from you and like you can only close your account at a branch. And I'm like, why isn't this information you, you can just like, like can't you just get it from me now? I think it's a ruse. I think it's a ruse to get me to stay. I feel like they're gonna offer me an incentive. They're probably gonna say like, why are you leaving the branch? And I'm gonna say, well, you charge me a $5 monthly fee, whereas at the credit union, there's no monthly fee. And then they'll say, what if we waive your fees? And then I'll say, well, why didn't you do that before? If that was an option, why wouldn't you just offer that? That seems a little dishonest. I'll decline that and then I'll say, well, another reason is because the closest bank to me is across the bridge and that's a 15 minute drive versus a two minute drive down the street to the credit union. And then they'll say, well, did you know that you can do mobile banking and blah, 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 blah. So I just have to be prepared to like really like stick to my guns and be like, close my account. Um, I don't know where the hell these are going, but I'm gonna just put them here for now. <laughs> Scalpums are next. Gosh, I hope that doesn't take as long. That felt like for Evs. Oh no, now I'm starting to get hives. Oh no. I might have to take a Benadryl. Does anyone else get panic attacks when they take Benadryl? I don't know why. It always triggers something for me. Like I always feel like I can't breathe. Anyway, other than those two goals, I don't really have any other goals. I'm just here for a good time. 
but I do think it's pretty freaking cool how much the channel has grown over the last two years. This reminds me of the time, well, not that my hands are, my hands and arms are burning, they're just itching like crazy, but here's a random story time. So I forgot what I was cooking, but I had never cooked with jalapenos before. And like in my brilliant mind, I didn't think to take any precautions just because I see people cooking with jalapenos all the time and they don't see, they just seem to be like handling it normally, like pulling the seeds out, like nothing crazy. So I just thought it would be the same. So this one time I'm cooking something and then immediately after my hands just start burning like both of my hands were on fire it was like i was just like holding it over a flame i was like crying and guys i was like grown okay this is when i was like i was living here i think like in this unit i think this was in like 29 no no it was like in 2021 i think i would have had a youtube already um i'm like crying because the pain is so bad and to the point where i'm like shaking because i i just like it just hurt so bad. I tried all these methods. Um, they're like, soak it in ice water, soak it in milk, soak it in all these things and nothing, nothing worked. The only thing that worked, and it was so weird because I thought that this would have been kind of counterproductive to it, but mustard. Like I read one blog where it was like, soak your hands in mustard. Mustard, a mixture of mustard and yogurt. Luckily, I had two of them, both of them, so I mixed it, like just dumped my hands in it, and it was like instant relief, and it finally went away after that, but I was close to like having my husband, Oh, we have another bad corn, no, um, I was close to having my husband take me to the hospital because I was like shaking, I just, it hurt so, so bad, um, not that, again, not that that's what I'm feeling right now, but I'm extremely, extremely itchy. I don't know what it could be. So again, because I need to pay for some vet bills for Pudge, I'm gonna be propagating my plants like crazy. Everything is kind of growing out of control anyway. And it would be nice to kind of get things sort of pruned back before winter. So I'm gonna be doing a separate video on that, just showing the plants that I'm chopping up and propagating. So. Um, if you're into that kind of thing, that video should be going up either not, maybe not the same week that this goes up, but maybe the following week. They look like little chestnuts. They're so cute. So, these are so tiny. I don't even know if they're going to do anything. Look how microscopic that is. It's so teensy tiny. Okay, um, I kind of feel like, I mean, it's fine. If a leaf grows from it, I always think that these are too big, but then I've tried putting it in like those small uh, condiment containers. And then once the first leaf comes out, it's just like squished up against the top. I think for these really small ones, I'll just stick it with another corm just in case like something happens to it. It's a little dicey. And then I'll do these the bigger ones on its own. Kind of wish I had enough stratum, but I'm filthy. I, I've, been, I've been wearing white so much while I film and by the end of it, my everything is just like brown. Oh my gosh, my arm. Okay, 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 okay. Did I ever tell you guys a story about um, when I had an allergic reaction to calamari? Well, if I didn't, you can listen to it again. So I, uh, <laughs> I am, I'm not like deathly allergic to calamari, but it's kind of like, you know, when you have like a gluten intolerance and then when you have gluten, like your stomach puffs up like triple its size. Uh, I am also that way, but I get that way with calamari to the point where it puffs up so much that there's like so much air in there that it pushes up like against my organs and I get these sharp, these sharp pains and then I pass out. <laughs> It happens pretty often. So calamari is one of those foods where I'm like, it's a no-no, it's an off-limits food for me. Um, but I always try and push it sometimes because I love it so much. And so 
this is when me and Vince were still like sort of in the beginning parts of our relationship. And I wasn't super close with his friends at that point. Like, like I had met them and like we had like partied together, but I wasn't really super comfortable with them. And I don't know why I thought this is the day. This is the day I'm going to have calamari. We're at this birthday dinner late right, for one of his closest girlfriends, girlfriends, and I, um, I ordered the calamari. Vince is like, do not, do not order the calamari. Like you can't. And I was just like, fine, okay. Once the server gets there, I'm like, one calamari, please. Vince is just like shaking his head, like you're gonna regret this, you're gonna regret it. And sure enough, within minutes of me eating it, I, I don't get any itchiness, no like swelling, no itchy tongue, not, none of that. But I could feel, I could feel the pressure. And the pressure, <laughs> the pressure was uh, increasing in my stomach, and I was like, oh no. So I reach into my bag to get my my pills, and uh, these pills are just like these extra strength, essentially like gas pills, and it just like keeps all the air out of there and like keeps things at bay. And honestly, I could have had it. I could have kept eating it had I had the medicine. Didn't have it with me. So I'm like silently panicking because I didn't want Vince to be like, I told you so, you know. So he's like having a good time talking to his friends. And I'm just sitting there just like watching my stomach get bigger. And then finally it gets to a point where I'm like, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna pass out. So I tell Vince, I'm like, I, I have to go outside. And he's like, man, I told you. He wasn't like mad or anything, of course. He was just like very supportive. Like, oh, like no worries. Like, let's go outside. So as I'm getting up, I can start to see like the flashes of like, you don't see flashes of light, but you essentially like the lights that are inside of the room already, like you get flashes of those between like black spots. So it kind of looks like lights are flashing, but really it's more like black spots flashing within like the lights of the room. So I'm starting to see black. I grab onto Vince. And then the last thing I remember is holding on to like a railing I could see the front door. I hold onto a railing and then lights out. I'm done. I'm out. I don't know how long I was out for, but I wake up and these two like security guards, because at this specific restaurant they have like a DJ. It's like a whole like nighttime thing. So they have like a I guess like a bouncer. So two of the the bouncers were like next to me, and they were like I could hear them interrogating Vince because Vince was like trying to take me to the car. And as soon as I came to, they were like, do you know this guy? Like, do you know him? And I was like, oh yeah, that's my boyfriend, you know? And he's like, did you have, like, did you have anything tonight? Like, I guess they were asking me if I did drugs. I was like, oh no, I just had calamari. And they were like, what? I was like, I'm allergic. I can't have calamari. And he's like, and you, but you had it. You're allergic to it, but you had it. I was like, I know. I made a big mistake. So essentially, they were just trying to make sure that, that Vince didn't like roofie me and was trying to take me home. So I appreciated that so much. Like, honestly, I I felt very grateful for them. Obviously, I was in great hands. I was with all his friends. I was not in any danger at all. But it's just like good to know that like there are good people out there that will go above and beyond sometimes and um, really look out for for women because... We're just so, like, we're easy targets, you know, we're easy prey, and I've certainly been in situations in my life where that has been the case. I have been, I don't even know if I can say this on YouTube, I have been held at, imagine this is something very sharp and silver and made of metal, taken all my stuff, um... And you know, that like that's just one instance out of many situations where I have been uh, preyed on by men. So anyway, all that to say, I was very, very grateful for them for just like looking out for me and just making sure that Vince wasn't able to take me out of their area or with out of their sight without um, me coming to and basically confirming that I was okay. So anyway, uh, that w I wish I could say that was the last time that I had calamari, but that would be a lie. 
I just love calamari so much. Um, but now if I have it, I make sure I always have my meds with me or I'm at home. Because if I pass out at home, it's fine. I could just go to my bed and then just, you know, have a nap. But I feel definitely grateful that I'm not allergic to anything major. Like, there's one medicine that I know I'm allergic to because I was prescribed it after I got dry socket. Um, I'm allergic to lobster. But again, with lobster, it's not a life-threatening thing. I just get just get itchy. It's weird because I can have other shellfish, just not lobster. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then also, I'm gluten intolerant. I think people. I think there's a. I think there's a confusion around what gluten intolerance is, or like people who um, choose to eat gluten-free foods. I don't know what anyone else's reasons are in terms of like a health or dietary reason, um, but for me, it's unless I want my stomach to puff up the size of a balloon, then I shouldn't eat gluten. But. There's no other reason that I wouldn't eat gluten, not like, oh yeah, I'm just, you know, trying to watch my figure. I don't even know if gluten is like something that you can like gain weight from, but, oh, my M got cut off. Why did I do that? Unless I ran out of paper. And that paper lasted really long. I got this during Christmas. I have clear labels now. I've been wanting to use these, but I was like, I am not gonna open it until I run out and I think Lauren is getting some clear tags for her shop so that I can label all my Hoyas. It's going to be a great time. Okay, so the ink is definitely not as dark, but I think you can say print density and then there's dark. So this is what the standard looks like. Let it come into focus. Come on. I mean, I guess it looks kind of the same. Oh, but this one's way better. Here, I'll show, I'll show you. The darker one is on top and then the lighter one is on the bottom. That's pretty cool. I was wondering why you would need like a print density, but I get it now. For the clear tape, you need it to be a little bit darker. Okay, so that is it for me today, y'all. Um, tomorrow, I'm at North Shore Tropicals again. I'm just doing, I'm helping, I think I'm helping Anna with a little bit of the stuff that she does like on a day-to-day -day basis. And then um, I think I'm watering Lauren's personal plants. So I'm not quite sure. I, oh, and then there was like a project that I was working on independently. So I probably will be there all day. Um, I'll try and film for you guys if I can. It's just a little bit hard because there's so many like fans running that the audio gets messed up. Because there are times where I just kind of like want to walk you through what I'm doing and talk to the camera, show you guys plants. But unless I'm in the shop and yeah, unless I'm in the shop, then I can't, I can't really talk. So um, we'll see how much I get tomorrow. If not, we'll just do another, like, maybe half an hour here at home, and then I'm gonna wrap. Tomorrow's gonna be, no matter what, tomorrow's gonna be the last day of week of filming because this video is gonna be insanely long. But, um, yeah, I will see you guys in the morning.
Hey guys, so I just got back from North Shore Tropicals. I was there all day. I have to talk pretty quietly because Vince is taking a nap in the bedroom. But I'm gonna close off this month's week off with something fun that I've actually never done on this channel before. So, um, what we have here is an Ethereum Forgetti Eye, and it's it's not like the dark dark form. It's not like the dark dark form, like super super dark, but it's dark. Um, I got this one from Alice and it is pushing an inflow and it's now sticky. Don't know if you can tell. I'm gonna try and do this without toppling this thing over. So she is sticky. I don't know if you guys can see all of those little saplets on, on the inflow, but like I said, I was at NST and um, I'm gonna throw in a photo of my Hoff X, Ethereum Hoff X. You guys wouldn't have seen it pretty much in the last few months because it pushed out an inflow and I wanted to have Lauren pollinate it with something that she has and she did and it's pregnant and I'm not gonna tell you what it's crossed with, um, but it's something really exciting. And once the berries are harvested, which it should be in the next few days now, um, hopefully she can maybe give me a few seeds so that I can document that process and show you guys what it is. Um, so that plant is living at NST for the next little bit, but um, it pushed out another inflow before that and it was still on it and there's still a little bit of pollen on it. I don't know how old it is, but um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this will take, but I figure instead of just throwing it away, I have nothing else to pollinate with, so I'm just gonna try it um, and just see what happens. And this inflow is pretty tiny, so um, at least it's like not like a huge one that I need to pollinate. But I'm just gonna show you guys how how I do it. Um, it's really, honestly, it's really easy. You just have them bump uglies. And I mean, there's a few ways people do it. Some people use like a paintbrush and whatever, but I just find the easiest way is to just like literally rub them together. <laughs> like, you know, when you were like playing dolls when you were little, and you would just like, you'd make them kiss. It's kind of like that. So I'm just trying to get as much of this pollen onto the sticky droplets as much as possible. And again, I don't know exactly how old this is, but it's better than just not trying and letting the, the inflow die. So I'd actually be pretty stoked if this took because then I can have Forgetti Eye Hoff X, which is like really exciting. So one thing I really love about the Hoff X is um, the red backs. It's, it's my favorite part of, of that hybrid. It has the same sort of neon venation as this. So I think if that, um, if this hybrid took, it would keep the same like venation color but yeah, that would be pretty cool if we can get some features of the Hoff on this guy. Anywho, um, I'm really just <laughs> trying to get every last bit, but I can see it's covered in pollen now. And you, you won't be able to see it on camera. It's like microscopic, but I'm just taking every last bit I can. I'm not sure when I'll post an update on this. It might be on this channel. It might be on Instagram. But if I can remember, I'll try and um, let you guys know what happens maybe in the next week of or something. Man, this thing actually has a lot of pollen. There's like a ton of pollen falling off of it and it's like all over my table. Oops. So I think this is nice and covered now. I don't wanna overdo it as well. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then you just wait. Uh, ways that you can tell that it's been successfully pollinated is it when it starts to like kind of resemble a corn on the cob, like it forms these little kernels. It gets really swollen. Sometimes it changes color. Um, but yeah, it's pretty obvious. The, the acceptance of pollen versus the inflow dying, very, very different um, physical characteristics. So you shouldn't be able to mistake them, but 
hopefully this takes. Um, this plant has flowered before, so I'm kind of hopeful that um, you know it's not going to abort. But fingers crossed that we have a fun little hybrid, maybe. But yeah, that's going to close it off for me. I'm so tired. I feel like this week of wasn't was it super, I don't know. I, I don't feel like I got a ton done around the house, mostly because it was such like a crazy time at North Shore. And um, that was kind of my focus this week. So hopefully the next week of we're around here um, more, even though I will be at North Shore pretty often now. But anywho, um, thank you guys for sticking around for another video. I hope you enjoyed whatever the heck I did this week long q a um if there are any other things that like maybe i don't really show on this series plant tours that you can think of around the house or just like think because i don't think of everything sometimes like the most i don't know thing that just like goes over my head where i'm like oh they probably don't want to see that like there are things that you guys ask about so um any suggestions that you guys can give me in terms of how this series can be improved or things you'd like to add to it or you'd want me to add to it that would be appreciated um but yeah thanks for watching again if you liked it please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and i will see you in the next one